they're really well educated and usually they can like perform like do an instrument or dance or some shit so they're like it's like they're like they're not just like a dumb street woman they're like a lady so, can have okay, so the point, so, conversation with so, so the point um, the point is that they have to not only have sex but do the really difficult work of carrying a conversation afterwards. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And afterwards. Yeah. Exactly. No joke. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Well, in fairness, right? Um, I've fucking I have heard of some instances that, like a significant part of any prostitute's job is just fucking somebody just is like, my fucking god, I'm not gonna, I can't do this. I'm just going through a lot of shit in my life. My wife's mm-hmm. been. My wife's been in a rough emotional spot, and, and, and they're like that's part of their job. That's what I've <laughs> listening heard. to that. I mean, that's like what I've heard. I guess I don't know. I believe it. I guess I don't know. Yeah, I would I'm talk sure. to any actual prostitute, so I don't know. Like <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah. Uh, am I am I speaking they... the truth here? <laughs> Are you what? Well, surely most. But it wasn't like. I think stop recording. It's weird. Grim. Well, uh, hey. I mean, I mean dude, <laughs> we didn't miss a lot. Yeah, okay. true. Um, the, yeah, the, the negation thing. All right, so when I was in a programming class. Excuse um, me, I, didn't, I, I wanted to go beyond the negation thing really quick. Though. Oh, well, okay, I have a comment on what you're going to. What, what, I have a comment on basically why you're going beyond it, right? Um, okay. Stuck in, or at least why I think you are. Um, when you're programming, right? Uh, I had a, I had a teacher who described certain methods of programming as crunchy, right? There's a <laughs> feeling to them where they feel like everything kind of just fits together, like gears crunching together. And it's mm-hmm. like that section, it felt crunchy, but like I don't yeah. know if it was like the most substantial thing in this section. Well, I think it was particularly profound. It was like a really good example illustrating, like I think it was his major point, and like what I believe, like. And I don't know if I took this away when I read it initially, but just how everything he's doing is describing. Like, even though he thinks, like, like he has the whole beetle in the box example where the beetle isn't real, it doesn't have to be real. But everything about our language is, like, it, it reflects sensations we have in ourselves. Like, when he describes, like, well, what, it, what does it feel like when you mean something? We're um, constantly talking, about, talking how, about the beetle in the box, even though it doesn't even necessarily refer to something. Exactly. And so, like, the point, like, like, what does it mean to intend something? I mean, like, this is, like, what he ends about, like, like, like how, what is the experience of that, like, of pointing at something in your mind? And I think that, like, it, it shows that what language is communicating is just a, it's just a way to self-organize our own internal experiences to create a shorthand for how we feel about things. Actually, like, while I was um, running the other day, I was just thinking about how I think this matches with uh, a lot of, like, the reason I can talk about intuitionism or whatever, because, like, our internal sensations, um, our feelings about things is, like, the rawest form, the most truest form of our experience. Um, and, like, how we learn concepts, how we learn language is is just feeling like, like, we just naturally associate a word with a feeling in ourselves. And like that, 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 That's interesting, because I actually kind of interpreted it. I, I've interpreted what he's been saying throughout the thing, mm-hmm. um, throughout this, as, like, specifically saying that language is about bringing about effects. It is Which practically is kind of about that. that. No, it's pr- it practically is. Like, the only way we can concretely talk about language about with other people and like make any substantive claims is by talking about the actual like sort of a behaviorist interpretation of like people and what they're doing and Mm. how they use language that's the only way we can talk about it but the truth of our experience of language is a totally internal sensational thing i mean sensational as in like having to do with sensation yeah so um, I've, I've just got to quickly interject and say that we should definitely uh, replace the word profound with the word crunchy in our vocabulary. I think that works really well. Oh, yeah. Um, like, I, I do think know, that like, it has a slightly different meaning, but, like, uh, I said that partially so, because you were in the chat, Kate, hey, and I know that you would know what I mean. Oh, I, I, I do know exactly <laughs> what you mean, yes. I mean, it's more fun as well, to be honest. Yeah, yeah it is a slightly different thing, but honestly, it's frequently more what's intended anyway. Yeah, exactly. 
Like uh, like when you do like a uh, a recursive algorithm on a tree. Oh, that shit's crunchy. Oh, that shit <laughs> is crunchy. That is crunchy. Also, yeah, we do need to work on that something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we should we should not alienate half our half our. We should people. definitely we not should. alienate half of our dude. The majority <laughs> of the people in the group right now. Come on. Yeah. Actually, it's only fifty percent. You hate. Oh yeah. Me. And Riemann. Are all, if you're all coders. Oh, is Riemann a coder? Oh, fair enough. I, I am? am. Wait, I am? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought, no, Riemann, thought, Riemann. Wait, Riemann, I thought you said, oh yeah, the crunchy, it makes sense to me, so I thought, I thought you've talked about, cause you're math, maybe you aren't, never mind. Well, I mean, it still oh, makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah, that was the, 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 the program okay. bit doesn't make sense. <laughs> Okay, Ma- mathematical, theor- mathematical theorems are almost all. Yeah, they're crunchy, dude. Yeah. I don't. Okay, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm... I mean, Riemann's a coder. I'm, I am. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, when I think of crunchy, to me, it, it, I don't know. It doesn't feel like... It doesn't give me the impression of something fitting together or making a lot of sense. Like, it may no. be satisfying. But yeah, I yeah that's all I can think of. I, I'm I really fighting think into they... a peanut bar of knowledge. But here's the thing. I, I, I think that, you actually have to be... I think you actually have to be a certain type of fucking I, intellectually weird in order to completely get in sense well, that I get it. Are you saying well, that I mean, to be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to <laughs> understand the distribution of crunchy to a non-feeling application. But no, I think he's right. No, you do have to be like a very specific type of nerdy to. You have to have a you have to have a very specific visceral reaction to when you have a lot of things together. Here's the thing, though. This speaks back to what I was saying about how the way we experience. I mean, it's a very visceral, like the way we you know use our language and when we say like a, a word fits. It's a visceral experience yeah. that we have. Um, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. And that, and and that also reminds me of someone. Uh, when I was in my uh, music classes in high school. There is this one that had a uh, synthesia and uh, yeah. someone oh, yeah. said like a D major chord and like uh, and she described it as crunchy. <laughs> I think she yeah. described like C major as like uh, something. I don't know. I just remember D major crunchy. <laughs> I feel like synesthesia is really relevant to like this conversation. Oh, it like, certainly is. Yeah, that's well, why I was talking about. about like inner experiences. And- because because in a, in a sense like. Synesthesia, like, it's just a more exaggerated form of something we all experience. We all have these abstract connections between different experiences and concepts in the world. So, like, 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 you know, I mean, you can imagine someone seeing, like, oh, I feel like, to me, the number three represents so-and-so. And it might not be as, uh, re- like, like, if someone who actually has synesthesia, it's, like, an extremely vivid picture, and it's extremely, like, yeah. repeated. Like, like you ask them every single time over that. time. Well, and, and over time, you ask them 10 years down the road, they will very likely tell you the exact same thing. Whereas, like, for a person who does not have it, 10 years down the road, they might give you a completely different response to what the feeling of freeness right. is. Um, but but the, the idea is the same. Mm. Right? That, like, we, we just draw these connections uh, because... Well, and also, of course, the really interesting thing is that uh, someone with synesthesia, synesthesia, like, will be able to talk about things that we wouldn't be able to talk about so concretely, but, like, because there are some senses that, like, translate better to to words and whatnot. Yes, exactly. And, like, and the thing about they use different things yeah. as those. So that, yeah. Because, like, sounds and pitches are a lot more abstract than <laughs> words and concepts, you know? The idea yeah. of linking uh, sounds to uh, concepts, well, by sounds I mean like musical sounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But linking that uh, kind of pitch to uh, ideas is a lot more abstract than linking a word to an idea. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously that's, that's, linking a word to an idea. Inter- okay, I have a question. Uh, do you spin it? Okay, obviously the answer is going to depend on which person, right? But like. Are there synesthetic people who um, experience certain synesthetic. words distinctly instead of experiencing the tones as different? I'm familiar with uh, people saying they see, like, a 7 as yellow or, like, A as blue or whatever. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, because this is, like, a... This is language units. As well, I know... Mm-hmm. The thing is, I know people who have letters that have personalities and colors. Oh, yeah, that too. As well as numbers. But words, I, I don't... I don't know. I haven't. I don't think so. I think probably part of the issue might be that um, words 
are less abstract than yeah, like, they already people. have like a defined so, meaning. But I'm yeah. sure that people exist. Like, I mean, like, I mean, even like you could imagine, like, what color is the word uh, for um, lethargic? <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, are uh, there any kind of philosophers that have gone, purple? like, seriously into this branch of this? Because I'd really be interested in looking into that after Hegel. Well, here's the problem, right? It would be really hard to go deep into this, because you always That's have... Fair. You always have the risk, right? That, like, all of this, every single part of this, falls under, like, the realm of, um... Falls under the realm of analyzing people's... What's the word? Alone? Analyzing people's, uh... Experiences of things. And They're you can beetles. do that from a neurological... Yeah, we're looking yeah, at the beetle. It could be all right. So you what you're saying is we need a philosopher place. We need a philosopher who is a synesthesiac. Uh, yeah, actually. That sounds well, cool. I mean, I mean, I mean I honestly, like, like one of them something maybe to go more into, like, psychology, like, like yeah. psychologists yeah. writing. I'm like, no, yeah. was actually talking to me today about reading, like, Freud or some shit, or maybe, um, I don't know. I don't know if Freud um, really counts. I don't know if you'd want to, but, but I'm just, I'm not saying that they t- even talk about that. Like, I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, like, no, it would be that, interesting, like, cause there's a lot of, well, yeah, like, well, like, realistically, Jung has this whole all symbol- aspects symbol- of science are philosophy. They're just, like, well, and, and, separated and, and, arbitrarily. And Carl Jung, too, I mean, he has this whole thing about symbols and all this bullshit. I mean, I feel like yeah. it sort of connects to that. <laughs> if we do, if we do Jung, we've gotta, do, we've gotta, like, just do some Peterson after that. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, we could. It, that it would be, be fun to. It would be fun. It, would be it fun. wouldn't be good, but it'd be fun. Just get the Jung and go straight to Peterson. Guys, yeah. we have to we have to do we have to you know it'd be fun to like for us to like do like some dream logging and analyze each other's dreams. Wasn't well, Young like that, a that could be really entertaining? Uh, yeah. Are, are you saying that because of Miltrum's dream last night? What was Miltrum's dream, <laughs> dream last night? He was talking about it earlier in general. Yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. He dreamed about a ribbon with my hair, and like, <laughs> it was just like. Because Milcom is in love with Riemann, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Milcom is, is in love with Riemann. Milcom, th- Milcom thinks the world of you, Riemann. He thinks you're so, like, uh, smart. He's like, Milcom's, like, actually, like, really smart. Like, he just tells me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the problem is, I don't have a mental... Okay, so I've got... I don't have a mental picture very well of Riemann or Fred over here. Um, uh, I, have, I, I, have, I have a mental picture of Riemann as, um, I don't know, your profile picture. And I have a mental picture of Freedom Baby as an abstract Asian. Ah, yeah. <laughs> the abstract Asian. Yes, of course. I am Asian. Like a uh, I mean, yeah, no, it, I, I do actually just, like, form my mental picture of people based on their voice and their profile picture. So, well, and, you. you know, and do I look like what a they dog? say. In your head? Do I look, look like a look dog? Like what? A dog. Uh, no. Uh, no, 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 oh. here's the thing, right? I actually don't usually click on people's profile pictures to see them closely. All I do is internalize well, all of the details I have to in order to be able to recognize it. So I don't even think of, like, I, all I think of is, like, red splotch with, like, 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 okay, here's the thing, right? People think, people think that something special goes on in humans that doesn't go on in neural networks when they recognize it. No, it totally They're doesn't. Wrong. You're completely wrong. When I recognize one of your guys' profile pictures, like when I recognize uh, your profile picture, Hoi Hoi Boy, I don't see a dog. I see fucking a little black, a grayish splotch, right? And I yeah. know that grayish splotch is you, even though I, I don't recognize it as a dog. Oh, I just have, a mental, I have an association in my head. Yeah, um, like, I mean, no, Tommy, your you picture kind of looks, cool. looks like a dog at, at like this scale, even though I know it's a frog or like a toad or something. You know what, yeah. Samia, I feel like the, the frog as your picture, like it just fits so well. Like I don't even know why. I know, I know. Like, I know. But yeah, also the thing is, of course, I don't see you like as a frog. It's just no. like yeah. the abstract version of. I think it's your voice, actually. I think because like I can imagine you voicing in like a cartoon a frog. Oh, is that so? Really? See, no, yeah, I just I whenever I see. I don't know, I just, like, connect it to them, but, like, not in a sense like, where I, like, see you it, as that. I don't know. It's it weird. might literally just be because you have that picture, and so now I've associated your voice with a frog, <laughs> and so that's why I hear it. Like, it could literally be that. It may not be any particular quality of your voice in particular. Like That's fair. A oh, very powerful. Do I, guys, <laughs> guys, what, do, what, do I, what do I evoke, guys? With my, do you see a chainsaw man with me? Like a... Uh, 
Uh, uh, is it your profile picture is one of those that I can't even really break down. Like, my brain can't process even if I make no, it. No, I just process it as, like, an, I just generally process them as, like, emotions and then fit that to, like, the person. Oh. Like, I don't know, like, an, a really, not really an emotion, but, like, a really abstract concept that, like, the, yeah, yeah, the image yeah. evokes. It reminds me of this image. I don't know, so I see it as, like, I don't know, like, uh. a fucking... <laughs> I've seen this before. What, 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 what is that? What is that? It's, well, uh, first, I'm, I'm going to ask the question that you have to ask with this image. Uh, would you please identify one object from this image? <laughs> I, like, no. can't. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Maybe, like, a bunch of earrings on display? Is that what that is? I, I don't know. I, I do I, recognize no, no, no. the stuff. Not, not, only can I not, not only can I not identify a single image in that picture, I can't identify a sing. I can't identify the perspective at which any of it is being viewed. What is this picture? <laughs> what is uh, it? This is, okay, so what this is is an image generated by an artificial intelligence oh. which has fed a whole bunch of images of scenes with objects in them. I see. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. It's like you totally recognize that the, it feels like there are objects in it, but you can't identify anything that's about so it. That's so cool. That Wait, is so Somniad, cool. Somniad, did you watch the dementia video thing? Uh, no. Uh, I thought that's what you were talking about when you were talking about it. But yeah, no, that's like a really good, actually like a really good way of, of putting how like we see the things. Cause yeah, like it's not yeah. like in terms of yeah, like, like coherent specific oh, objects or anything. There, there's another really, fa- there's another really special implication to this, which is that, um, hypothetically, you could figure out some systematic way to generate images in a certain class where somebody who's not very familiar with one image would say, these two images are the same, um, even though when you put them side by side, they're actually nothing like each other. Those would also probably be images that a uh, neural network would probably think are pretty similar. Well, no, 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 no. Maybe thing. not. Um, the thing well, is the, uh, depending think, on what it's looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think probably um, it would be very specific to which neural network, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think all neural networks are going to have that property, but With not all things. of them are going to be the same as for what humans do. Yeah. Yeah, all neural networks are going to have similar issues, like it, with some things. But yeah. what things they are depends. Yeah. I, was, I, I actually watched a different. DEF CON talk about, like, confusing uh, confusing neural networks to, like, make them think you're a license plate or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, make like, you know, like the passive stuff they have, uh, they have set up, like, just monitoring stuff and collecting data. Yeah, there are so many good DEF CON talks on, tr- on shit like that. But I'm, I'm totally, it's one. just starting up again now, so I'm really, lo- like, online fully, cool. so I'm looking at, uh, I'm hoping to see what. Oh, shit. Did anybody uh, do the at everyone? I forgot. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I always, it. like, at uh, um, Dagging Tiger. Oh, no, do at everyone. At everyone. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So yeah, I'm like, I, 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 I for like discussions about like the format. I mean, yeah. look, there's like 40, like top. Like, is there even 40 people in this server? Like, who gives And most it? of them are not active. <laughs> yeah. Well, I definitely wanted to add 40 different people. Holy yeah, shit, I mean, we pinged it twice. Yeah, oh, I know, yeah. I know. I decided to actually give some fucking context. The big one, the last section in part one, coming an hour later if you want, yeah. we've basically gotten nowhere. Guys, I'm so happy, oh, yeah. we already, like, I'm so happy, like, to have, I, I, I'm glad we're expanding the John Galtz. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's growing that we have yeah. more John Galtz. Like, I really, really, really would like to get to the point where everybody who's actually active in the discussion is John Galtz. Like, well, that would I'm be, a really yeah. big fan of, like, uh, anarchism as, like, a way of, of, uh, a, a way of, like, Governing a, uh, a small groups of people, like I think yes. regardless of problems that occur, like because there are pro- problems occur when governing yeah. large groups of people, no matter what. But like yeah. for small groups of people, like <laughs> anarchy is like really re- like this type of thing. I mean, is really it, really yeah. good. You can find a practical system which doesn't have like extremely serious problems. Like 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 if you can find a system where it's impossible to um, like sustainably commit horrible acts upon a large group of people, then you deserve a medal. That's fair. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody's found that yet. 
Yeah, well, I, I agree. Us. What? Nothing's stopping us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except the difficulty of the problem. Fucking hard. You know I mean, what? Why don't yeah. Why don't we make a system that inflicts the most pain possible? Oh, I already have one of those. Possible. Did you watch the drink video? It was. Yeah, it was. The we drink already video. have that. Oh. I just yeah, had to make it's the called drink. Neoliberals. Too. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> sorry. It's fine. All right. Yeah. Just just make just make sure to remember. Um, if you just if you said that in a random group of people, they would all be like, "Ha, funny joke." But like we are, we've already all heard the joke. We've already all heard the joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, there joke. is a there is a new drag video out that came out like during the beginning of this, and I I'm looking forward oh, to watching it after the meeting. Oh man, like what is the video? Minutes. Has the Overton window shifted left or right? Uh, it is definitely. <laughs> it's I, I, right. think, I, I think drag is going to say that it shifted to the center. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! No, what you've got to know, like for predicting these, because none of us are watching it while this happens. We've got to look at is how long is the video? Um, seven, minutes. Minutes. Seven, minutes. seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay, so you know, I think I think he's trying to make a joke about it, like shifting both ways. That that sounds more like I'm, I'm more like anti centrist shtick. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, before I joined the board, I actually watched that video. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. Don't tell us about it. Don't spoil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, I, I will no, spoil it. Right now. Keep, keep the spaghetti in your mouth. Oh, speaking of which, I loved, I loved episode seven. I Fucking. couldn't. I didn't watch the whole thing. I was like, I can't. I just can't. Like, I it. Mean, it was funny. Ironically, I thought it was fun. I've seen that video before. Like, it's on his Patreon page. Oh, nice. Oh my god. Uh, wait, stuff. episode Actually, episode seven of what? Centricide. Wait, it's out? Yeah. Well, I think it's on so yeah. It's not actually out. I'm going to share it with you. Oh, um, is it on Patreon? It's on his YouTube. I mean, that one is. The uh, the actual one is probably out on Patreon or something. Well, yeah, he said it was getting released, like... Wait, where is 7? I don't see 7. It's unlisted. Oh, did you unlist the video? Yeah. Uh, it's oh, send me the link. It's not actually episode it. 7. It's a short Wait, film about bees. It's it's God. beautiful. I love it. It's something. Okay, well, I'm just going... I have no idea what's going on, and I don't care enough. Uh, all right, so it is entirely possible that I'm going to send you my notes in order to prove that I did it for the whole section, because we're not going to get through them. Okay. No, yeah. you should talk about them right now, bro, honestly. All right, all right, all right. So fucking... <sighs> okay, so... Oh, wow, I literally haven't gotten... Okay, you should that. actually upload the notes, though. That would be useful. I would like all right, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll be like a text document, probably. That's Boom. Fine. Yep, over 2,000 characters. There we go, message.txt. There Why go. don't you put it in voice text? Uh, yes. fucking, alright, because I'm gay, that's all. You Thanks. are super gay. Big gay. Okay, wait, oh wait, Center Side 7 actually exists. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm waiting for well, real quick. Exists. Um, is, is this wait, like no, some I, dumb, I, I like is this the main video? I like this version is oh. copyright claimed on your video. Wait, you list... Uh, high five, I already linked it in voice text. Oh my god, get over it. No! Why, why are you guys incapable of staying on one topic without immediately changing it? Because we're this, all this, mentally like, ill! Like, no, here's the thing, right? It would be fine. <laughs> we, we, we also have times where we just, like, organically move the discussion, right? And that's fine, that's great, I love that, right? But, like, at the very least, can we not just have people just interjecting random shit? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think we can, now we can, we're going to start because you're going to go through this text thing. So let's Okay, okay, okay. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, sorry, right. I still have the link. Nice. Yeah. Good. It's beautiful. I, I love the story about the ants and the bees. Uh, I thought it was highly entertaining. Okay. So, um, let's, let's actually start. Um, before we start, I have one other thing to point out. Um, and that is uh, Section 546. Let's all go to Section 546, uh, okay. except for you, Freedom, because you're not going to see it. Um, what? Because uh, you have a different copy. Everyone with a digital copy, go to 546, and I'd like you to all take a note, uh, which is uh, Cornell. That is all. Okay. <laughs> Cornell. Um, I hope fucking... In 546, there's, oh, let him Cornell. It's just the fucking, it's just the, uh, OCR or whatever fucking up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to become exclamation point. 
Oh, somebody, somebody. Oh yeah, R N being and am getting confused. I fucking hate that with O C R. Somebody should just take a uh, take a clip out of this. Um, that's just come excl- exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> I I should make a clip show out of this. Um. Okay. Hi. We're just about to get started, but we're Hello, we're Roots. about to start actually talking about. Did the you text, do the reading so. roots? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. You're not. You don't have to. Yeah, I've been doing the reading. I know, right? Wait, I thought I was going to read. Fuck no. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm here though. I thought hers was the worst. Yeah, I know, because you've been here, you've been coming for the past few weeks, and then you just haven't even tried to read. That's not true. I tried to read for the last one, but I was busy this week. That's fair. I was busy this week. Okay. Nobody has any excuse because I right. managed to read it. I'm working full time. I am like the I am like the other person the Olympics trying to fucking show off everyone. Oh my god. Whatever, just some yet, some just go just go. I I think I'm probably the only person here here who has the intellectual stamina to to do the fucking readings. And to understand all the references in Rick and Morty. Fucking yeah. Uh, I think I'm the only person here, here who has the force of will to do the readings, but not the force of will to actually have a fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. All right, all right. So, um, all right, so I very first thing he does, uh, let's and talk he... about negation. All right, so X, X and Y are two different kinds of negation. Uh, they're two different words in a language game. One negates itself to make a positive, the other reinforces itself to make a negative. What do they do together? Who the fuck knows? Wait, no, no, no. <laughs> I think you're just... Descri- so what, what the thing is, with what he was saying was, let's imagine two different words for a negation. One is X, the other is Y. And the thing is, when you use X twice, so X, X, with that, it's like a double negative, which becomes a positive. But with Y, when you do Y, Y, you just emphasize, like it's doubly negative. It's like, this is extra, extra negative. Yeah, I apologize. I'm going to have to actually dynamically reword what I wrote here, because for some reason I wrote it from the perspective of uh, summarizing, not from the perspective of, like, summarizing um, from the perspective of somebody who's already read it and needed it reminded, and forgot that there would be people who didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Um, yeah, okay, so basically, yeah, you've got two words, X and Y. Um, they, They both mean not, right? Um, one of them, when used twice, is a double negative, and it creates positive. One of them, when used twice, is extra negative. It's like mega negative. Um, and uh, fucking... So the question that Wittgenstein asks is, do X and Y mean the same thing? And he actually gives three different answers to this, um, and he doesn't take a stand on which one is correct. And the point isn't the answers he gives. The point is that none of these answers are particularly more right than the others, right? Um, you could say that, like, um, you could say that they're exactly the same thing and there's just this little side note, right? Um, you could say that... Actually, let me go to the section where he lists them out so that I can... Because I don't have them right down here in my notes. Um, Wait, yeah. um, hold on. He, he didn't say, do they mean the same thing? He said, in a certain context, Right. Uh, because uh, no, so if you use the word X alone by itself, not X, X, and yeah, then if yeah, you, yeah. in another mm-hmm. sentence, if you use the word Y, so if, if he, he's only asking in that specific context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what he's actually saying is, do they have the same meaning when they occur without being repeated? What the fuck is Roots doing? Say he was leaving? Uh, I, think he, I think he came, didn't say a word when asked a question right after joining, and then left. Yeah, he's still there, isn't he? Oh, we love. Yeah. Do Sounds like the weird thing to do. Okay. Wait. The dude's my friend, but he does some weird shit. Typical oh, weird yeah. moment. Oh, oh, okay. I, I got, I had internet problems, that's why. Alright, alright. Right. 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 He still right. showed up so, in the chat to you. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess the question then is, do they mean the same thing when they're, when they're not repeated, right? So that is a good point. Hmm. So, and the first answer is the words have different uses, so they have different meanings. Well, do we have specific uh, examples of words for this, or are we just going with, like, 
Well, he uses X and Y here, but there are actual words. Right, because I feel yeah. like it'd be a lot easier to go with, like, actual specific examples. Well, well, no, here's this. Okay, so can anybody imagine, I can't, but I want to see if anybody else can imagine, like, a, a way, like, a, a, a time when, like, for the most part, a double negative is a positive, but, like, actual instances where in conversation a double negative does not mean a positive? Yeah. Well, the thing is... Oh, no, 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 no. Some you know. Some yeah, we know because we, 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 we nerded out about it in the chat. I'm just curious, anybody else? Well, no, no, no. I'm not going to give the answer. What I want to point out here is that it's easy to construct a situation where two negatives make, a, uh, make a ne- an extra negative, but it's harder to make a situation where the same negative twice makes an extra negative statement. Well, yeah, Which but I think... I think is more analogous to what he's saying here. Yeah, well, that's true, but I mean, I still think because it... Whatever. It's, it's easier to connect still, no, I think, I think you can even just yeah. with, with emphasis say, like, uh, just say the word not twice and have it mean just extra not. <laughs> like... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's fair. Uh, well, I thought we were talking um, some specific, reckon. like, different negatives, though, where, like, by default, the one would be uh, a double negative if it's, like, twice, like... A positive yeah, like you could say, twice, whereas um, the other would be would be by default um, just extra negative if, if said twice. Yeah, you could say, for instance, uh, like what you were just saying there, eight hey, nine, to actually make that into an example. You, you could say, "I am not, I am not doing that," you know. Um, or you could even just uh, take out the second "I am" and just say, "I am not not doing that." Yeah, you know, and it would be easy to interpret that as. I am not doing that instead of I'm not not doing that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was that was actually the example I was thinking of. Yeah. Um yeah. but then but then yeah, what I'm interested in is if there if there are like two different types where like the default would be different for their uh, Well, the thing for duplication. The, the example I was thinking of was when you say like there ain't nothing that can make me do that. <laughs> Something ain't like nothing that. was actually the one that I I came up with too. Uh or um, duplication that's okay. Or um, wait, uh, I, he does he he okay. Uh, he'd have um given ex- like, give an analogy of what these two words mean. Like um X is like turning around hundred and eighty degrees, but Y is like shaking the head. Yeah. So, I mean in, yeah. in a sense so I mean like, yeah, shaking the head um I mean yeah. yeah, so shaking the head well, we don't it's not we don't consider it a word, but it, it, it is a form of communication. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. part of our language game for sure. Yeah, so in that sense, you know, we already have yeah. a Word, even if you don't call it a word for, you know, why. Well, like, oh, gosh, I, 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 um, I, I took a picture of this section. I forget what it was, but it was like, um, where, where he says, like, uh, a double negative. Like, imagine, like, a language where to make us, like, a, to change a statement into a negative, you would change the pitch of how you said it. What would a double negative look like? Like, how do you, how, how does it even work? I mean, it was just like, yeah. what? It was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really think that's like almost perfectly analogous to the shake of the head. You know? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, it's not possible to have that negative, you know, turn around and become a positive when you say it twice. Uh, well, I definitely wouldn't say that it's not possible, though. Right, like you could easily just well, arbitrarily okay. construct it's a language possible, game, but it's it's not how it is yeah, in exactly. our language game, yeah. um, and that's but, very interesting. Um, but yeah, sorry, just to just to clarify, in the in the actual example, it's not talking about like one word and then the other, and then adding another different negative word makes it more negative. It's where one of the words, uh, reduplifying it, which no. is the term for that, um, it, duplifying, <laughs> redu- reduplifying. Yeah, it's a real word for like that concept. That English sounds English. like. It's like um Reduplification. Well, it's it's a real thing. It's it sounds like uh what's the, I can't think of the word for it where you just say something twice unnecessarily. What is that? No, like, it's like for, it, sorry, it's like for uh not not redundancy. Um it's like, Oh yeah, yeah. But it just sounds like a redundant word like reduplifying, like duplifying. Oh, not, not reduplication. Okay. Reduplication. Okay. Reduplication is a morphological process in, w- in which the root or stem of a word, or part of it, or even the whole word, is repeated exactly or with a slight change. Reduplication, yeah. or reduplication is used in inflections to convey a grammatical function, such as plurality, intensification, etc., and in lexical derivation to create new words. Yeah. Well, so it's the concept that- in linguistics where you, where you say something, uh, twice to either, uh, to either emphasize or like, mean more of that thing, uh, or to form a, a new word, like, based on that concept. Well, the thing <laughs> is, like, in, in, 
Well, in Chinese, for instance, that's like a... It's just really rare in English. Finish what you're saying. For some reason, the first reduplication instance that came to my mind, um, I just made up a whole situation around it. It was just some fucking carny yelling, rats, rats, rats. <laughs> just, what? Rats, just rats piling up around him. They come from every crevice. What? They consume. Like a rat. Okay. Um, Interesting. But, sorry, but I was actually I was actually trying to say something before we got sidetracked, and what I was saying was that um, that in this example he's not talking about like one word being a negative and the other word being oh, sorry like a, two negation words, and like you pile the one on top of the other and it become and it like doesn't become a, a double negative it just reinforces it. He's talking about like one word x and another word y where x uh, yes. it becomes positive when uh, when reduplica- reduplified. And uh, and why uh, becomes just more negative, right? It's not like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To clarify there. Yeah, I mean, I know my example with like, like nothing. Not like, it's like, not the same. Yeah. But but I I was just I guess like um and, and it's true I guess I, I didn't even remember that there's a better example of like the 180 versus the shaking of the head. That's a better example. That is a really good example. But for, yeah. but um uh I was just giving showing how they're. In reality, like that does happen. I yeah. guess is why I, I just that. I just figured I should like make sure we're extra clear on that because it, it seemed yeah. a little it's um, important a, a yeah. little unfair. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what I really want to talk about here is what does this example mean for like how language goes? Uh, mm. Fucking that was a super vague term, but that I was a very vague example. term. Yes. But example, language right? is vague. Yeah, okay, fucking, you can say that, but, like, that's literally just a thing that sounds good in this context, but doesn't really mean very much. Um, it's a deepity. Well, no, but I mean, that kind of was a deepity, I think. <laughs> right? No, well, like, I might, but the point I'm making, I mean, language is ultimately, I mean, like, I was saying at the beginning, it's a very, I hate to use it, but it's the best one I can think of, a sensation old thing. Like, it's it's very much about how, like, you just feel, like, words of, uh, or words evoke certain feelings in you. Sure, um, but words can also transmit information, and in this case, it didn't do. transmit very much of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. but, like, uh, that, that, that altogether doesn't excuse the fact that I intended to communicate a particular thing, and it completely failed. No, it doesn't excuse it. I'm just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just trying to say, like, it doesn't matter. Continue. Okay. <laughs> It's fine. Okay, okay. I, I kind of so, get what you're going for, but yeah, let's, let's move to, on. To give an example of what I'm going for, right, um, what I took out of this, yeah, what you take out of it is a good way to think about it. Like, what do you take out of about this um, for its implications about language in general? Um, and fucking, honestly, I kind of feel like this is a really good example of how the meaning of a word, like, what it is, even a word in a specific instance doesn't have a meaning that you can nail down, you know? Right. There's um, like there's just constantly more context that can actually be added to it to to convey to change how the word might be interpreted. Yeah. Um let's say for instance that um let's say for instance that X and Y are actually the same word. Right? This is just something I'm coming up with off the top of my head. Let, let, let's consider a situation where X and Y are actually the same word, but they're two different meanings of the same word. Right? Right. Um, so, for instance, depending on how you, you inflect your sentence, a double, like, say there's just X. Depending, depending on how you inflect your sentence, XX can either mean a turning around, um, or it can mean uh, a shaking of the head. And this is really interesting, because it shows how... Um, it shows how if somebody asks, did you mean the turning of the head, or sorry, did you mean the turning around or the shaking of the head when you used X once, you wouldn't really have an answer for them, right? Like, the meaning of the word isn't fully which meaning you meant. It could have been either one and it wouldn't have mattered, right? Hmm. Um, it, and I just think it's really interesting that words... Yeah don't have to be nailed down like that. Right. right. Actually, we can go with a way more concrete, like, actual example. We can literally go with not, not. Right? <laughs> yeah, like the example we went with before, yeah. right? You can yeah, be, like, it. reduplifying it with, us, with more of a pause and more of, like, the same in- inflection on it, on both, means it's, like, means it's more negative than just saying not once. <laughs> Whereas, 
without that, it could be it could just mean uh, you are going to right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, like, we have, like, example, a specific right? example here, even, of, like, yeah, where the context changes what it means. Yeah. Like, um, and, and that's really interesting, because when I say not on its own, I don't really mean either of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not specifying, so, because the only yeah. time it matters which thing is specified so, is, like, at the point of reduplication, or reduplication. Yeah, and we're already, we're we're already like, almost skipping ahead all the way to the end of the chapter, but, mm-hmm. like... Um, fucking, when I say the word not, the meaning there, what I mean by it, um, isn't contained within the, all of the word not, you know? Um, like, like the word not doesn't contain all of its possible meanings. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, not just the word on its own. Yeah. What is it, Freedom? Well, no, it's just you said the word doesn't contain all of its meanings. I mean, I would say when you use the word, you are not aware of all the meanings you are, but of the word that in all possible contexts, but, um, yeah, I mean, the, the way in which you use the word doesn't contain all of the meaning. Of the yeah, word. well, even any definition of just the word on its own doesn't contain all of the meanings that it can signify. Yeah, 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 but, but like, it is worth considering. Um, that, like, even if a word contains one single, even if one word has one definition, which you can, like, contain it with, right? Um, I still think that, I still think that the fact, like, for instance, the fact that there are various answers to the question, um, now have X and Y the same meaning in sentences where they occur without being repeated? I think that the fact that there are multiple correct answers to that show that um, even though even though the meanings of X and Y are perfectly encapsulated within their definitions, right? Um, all of the mean, meanings they convey yeah, are not. Yeah, all the meanings they convey aren't, which means that a definition isn't enough to talk about all of the meaning of the word. Well, wait a minute. I'm not yeah. sure I'm on the same page with you guys. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, uh, obviously a definition... I can think of concrete examples of words we can use for this if you need some more stuff. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, maybe I, I, I'm just not following like the... A, exactly a really easy way of going with it is, is to say impl- impl- uh, fuck, implication as opposed to or, uh, or yeah, the implied meaning behind the things, which is huge, which is always contextual. But, for instance, um... Definitionally speaking, uh, to say something is degraded in quality versus to say that something is, um, uh, crap, I've suddenly forgotten the word, um, deteriorated? I don't know. No, 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 no. Um, no, the word that the Nazis always use, um, degenerated? Thank you, degenerated. <laughs> uh, their, their definitions are basically the same, um, and, and in fact, in, in a lot of contexts, they can be used completely, um, like interchangeably. interchangeably, I see, I see. But depending on the context, and not even to all listeners, they but they can mean very so different things. Yeah, yeah very, and just because you mentioned things. like the word degenerate has connotations that uh, okay. the other doesn't. Well, well, that's the just thing. Yeah. we here's, just explained. Here, here's my thing. I think I'm just not vibing with the way you say it. Like it's like, depend on the context. Like I like the word connotation. Like you can't catch all the connotations of a word through its definition because it's more than just like. The meaning, like, we, we write out, like, oh, this means, you know, something bad. But, like, the mm. connotations. Well, and the connotations change based on all sorts of contexts. Yeah. Uh, I think also, I, like, if I had to venture a guess here, I would also say that even in particular instances of usage, you still can't nail down exactly what the meaning of a word is in a context, right? Um, wait, okay. I, I just thought of something. It, it might be completely garbage, but, like, okay, say right. you have, Two yeah, words, okay. okay. Okay, if you have two words, and, okay, if, let's say you declare them to, you declare, you declare to swap them around, okay? And then, in that sense, is the definition of each word not encapsulating their meaning as you use them now? Like, say if you were to just, uh, switch around the words yes and no, right? Um, mm-hmm. now they have opposite Meanings, even if the original definitions didn't change. And do you get what I'm saying, or is this complete garbage? No, I feel like you need um, to elaborate more for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're around their definitions, okay. So what I'm saying here, 
So, like, I mean, a, so a definition, well, what were we saying before is that a definition doesn't encapsulate all of the meanings of the word. Mm-hmm. Because it depends on context. No, right? But, yeah. if, I mean, you can, it, it, easy way to show this is to make the context such that you literally change the meaning of the word. Right, because well, there are contexts oh, yeah, yeah. in which sla- in which wor- words like yes and no can have like at least contextual meanings which are opposite from their uh, their regular meanings. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you could easily <laughs> there are really simple contexts where um, where like you could agree in advance um, to just uh, communicate in a certain way. What are lords looking for? Um, oh, okay. So now that I think about it, this might not be exactly what you're talking about, but I think that I, I think it's a very interesting thing to think about. Um, you can be playing, you can intentionally be playing a different language game with one person than you are with another while talking to them both, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, like as yeah. an example, you might want to, well, you like might in, want to, like, like a little wink and a nod kind of thing, right? Yeah, like um, an inside joke or something that you say to two people yeah. and you know they will interpret it differently. Yeah, like, like you, uh, shared knowledge between you, right? Like, um, fucking, as, as an example, you could come up with a language that you could speak, um, with your friend. That, um, it's like a, a code word. Speak, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, can, like, it's like you, 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 like, you call somebody and like, like you're like in trouble and you say like, oh, the pizza didn't come, but that's like a code word that means like, oh, you're in sorry, trouble. Sorry, to clarify, like to clarify, do you mean like coming up with codes that contextually mean certain things, or do you mean coming up with your own actual language? Because I was well, I talking know. about how codes. Um, but I mean, that is a language. I mean. What is more complex? There is there is a strong difference. Yeah. Well, Um, no, there is, but I I mean, I'm just saying, like how. Well, I think I I think that there is a difference, but I do think that it's worth thinking about how both, like, like both our language games in like a different way. You know. Yes. Yeah. Um, I I I was just thinking about how like maybe you could come up with a system for um. A a system whereupon you agreed that certain words had certain meanings. Like dog Um, whistling. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, I, 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 yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 You agree. Well, you decide that by posting. that by, for instance, posting a Pepe emoji, you you might you might be signifying to these people that you're part of their group. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What you do is you have system. You have a system of when I say this word in this context, it actually means that I am identifying as this, even though the person that I'm posting it with, the person that I'm talking to. Um, doesn't know that. Have we should add some kind of emoji every now. possible discussion of philosophy. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, I, politics is a way of enacting, uh. Philosophy, yeah. Politics is cringe. You're cringe. Politics is cringe. Or other politics is case. practice, basically. Yeah. Like philosophical yeah. practice. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, 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 it's on a larger scale than like ethics or philosophy of life, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fucking. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, all right, all right, all right. By the way, I just I just like to say that we've managed to talk about the uh, text for at least fifteen straight minutes now, and I'm really impressed with this. Good yeah, job, that's guys. fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a record? <laughs> it might be. No, it's not. Now it's the not. early epi- the early the early meetings we we did a much better job. Uh, yeah. Of well, in fairness, that. I do feel like um I do feel like talking about the text uh consistently was probably a factor um, that was mostly based on us not having stuff to talk about because we weren't used to fucking around with each other. I also think that Wittgenstein is just a terrible author to discuss like this. I don't disagree. <laughs> I disagree. I think I think it's great because it's like um, the discussions are more fluid and they lead to other things mm-hmm. and other ideas. I mean, oh, no, no, no. Sort of the point is that Wittgenstein touches on everything and everything no, no, no. touches on Wittgenstein, yeah, sorry, which is why we sorry. ended up going to Wittgenstein so early on. Cause it came, what, I, what I meant by that wasn't that a, uh, if we're looking to like purely distrust the text, that's what I mean by oh, it. Oh, yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, that, yeah, Wittgenstein pure. is yeah. very difficult to do in that way. If we want an author to purely discuss the text with, then we can go read Hegel because uh, uh, that show. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. If you want to find, it. if you want to find real life connections to like the real world with Hegel, you know, <laughs> put in a lot of work to it. It's gonna take effort. Yeah. Yeah. By the um, way, by the way, this? I'm looking forward to Fiction Month, guys. I'm. Uh, 
This is <laughs> what are you doing in the real world? I, I honestly think the fact that we're talking about so much stuff that's not di- like that is related but is not directly of the text is really good. Like that's I what agree. I want to talk about. That's ex- I agree. yeah, it's I way agree. more fun that way. Um, I that's was why Hegel is so much trouble to prepare for. Yeah, such a. <laughs> but, but, okay, so but my question is about fiction month. This is sort of sorry logistical. We can talk about this more later. But we have to think about access to the text, like. Are we going to ha- be able to, like, people going to be able to find, like, PDFs of them? Or, like, people have to, like, like you know what I mean? Of what? Like, like, of, uh, of Hegel? No, no, not Hegel fiction. No, oh, yeah, no. I mean, most of it's publicly accessible, and if it's not, we're posting it in chat. Because, yeah, everything's got to be accessible to everyone. Yeah. Who exactly. has an adult crying like a baby in their background? <laughs> <Must> yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's my, that's my little brother. Sorry about that. I was a little bit worried that there was actually like a severely autistic person in the background. And like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> like, bit shitty, bit. Oh, sure. <laughs> you destroyed. Oh, totally. That, that would have been feel a little bad, yeah. Right. <laughs> all right, all right. So, fucking. But let us continue, because this is actually this is actually a part which I feel is really important. Um, well, there are a lot of important parts, obviously. And can you okay. orient us to like the section numbers or like what in particular in your document you're referring to as well? So I, can I mean, did you, oh, you? Freedom, are you not looking at the document? It has section numbers everywhere. I am. I'm saying like when he's talking, when he's oh, using yeah. words and speech. Can you just clarify where he is so I can look at it? Oh, by the way, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm really looking, I just gotta point this out. Uh, 569 language is an instrument. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Language, oh. My, oh, speaking a word is like striking a note on the keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're getting there, we're getting there. Sorry, I just had to. Wait, I am, okay, we're getting there, we'll talk about it later. Okay. Um, I have, I have thoughts on that, but, mm. we'll, 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 we'll get it. Okay. But I, so, where am I here? Uh, we're talking about essential and inessential oh, aspects. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, this, yeah. This makes me wet. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. So, um, it's so good. Okay, okay. So we're around I mean, 562. This is, dude, this is Philosophy Book Club. Everything about Wittgenstein makes every one of us wet. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, I, yes. I, think five, I, I think 563 is the best place to start here, right? right. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, I'm only going to say that I'm talking about the section around 563, because this is a summary. I'm going over the idea, not, like, fucking going sentence that's by fine. sentence. That's fine. No, no, that's fine. I was more yeah. referring to, like, what, like, just, a, that's fine. A general area yeah. is great. Yeah, we're around 563-ish. Um, okay. So he goes on to talk about essential and inessential aspects of the role certain rules might have in a game. Uh, for instance, he talks about how it might make no difference that a king in checkers um, if you're not familiar, your translation might say droughts. Um, if you didn't figure it out, droughts is just checkers. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about how it might make no difference that a king and checkers should have should be two pieces, one on top of the other. Uh, you would be playing the same game in the case that the king was a single piece uh, that was designated to be the king. Uh, he also talks about a few other rules um, that you might have to some games. Like, for instance, he's talking about how you might... Uh, draw lots for, like, you put, you put the kings, like the white and the black king behind your hand, or behind your back and shuffle them up, and then your opponent can pick one of them, and they get whichever one they, they point to, right? Um, and you would ask, you, you would like, you would figure to yourself, these are not essential aspects of these games. Um, but he also has this section in, where is it exactly? Uh, what? Yeah, 567. He says, but after all, the game is supposed to be done by the rules. So if a rule of the game prescribes that the kings are to be used for drawing lots before a game of chess, then that is an essential part of the game. And if I, he, goes, he goes on to talk about what objection you might take. Um, in 564, actually, which is actually backing up a bit, um, he says something that I think is really vital to this. Um, the game, one would like to say, has not only rules, but also a point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is really important because um, I think fundamentally what he's saying here is that the point of the language game that we play, 
Um, the point of the language game that we play is to affect others. Yeah. Right? And that's what we're talking about with language as an instrument. I see. Um, well, uh, I just also wanted to say, because you said you went back to 564 about saying how, like, language not only has rules but also a point. But, like, in 567, he says, like, talking about the drawing lots with the king or whatever. If we found this rule in a board game, we'd be surprised and would speculate about the purpose of the rule. Mm-hmm. So, like, oh, rules yeah, yeah. have purposes. You know, are yeah, cool. Cool. This is great, by the way, because it reminds me of it reminds me of when um, you might object to a prescriptivist saying you shouldn't start your sentence with a preposition, and the natural objectionist, the one that everyone understands um, kind of intuitively, Implicitly. yeah, is but if somebody starts their sentence with a preposition, you as I did in the sentence, and I know exactly what they mean, yep. and so it's, it's, a, it's end your sentence with a preposition. Oh, is it end? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't okay. say you would you would yeah. you wouldn't want to have like two at the word two uh, like to at the end of your sentence, for instance. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Um, whatever. I, I, either way, yeah. right? Um, either way, uh, the point is the point I'm trying to make is that it's very clear intuitively that the point of language is to create effects in others in certain ways, right? Some of those mm-hmm. effects might be understanding. Some of them might be commands. And there might be others. And I think Wittgenstein actually does a pretty good job um, when he's talking about the nature of language, also going over how those language games work at, like, a very rudimentary level. I would I would phrase it as transmitting information to the other people, but they are functionally the same. Uh, 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 I, don't, I don't think... I don't think it is necessarily functionally the same. Transmitting information versus evoking... Uh, an effect. In evoking an effect on them? Yeah, I think, I think they are the same. Um, I think they aren't. Well, first of all, they aren't because we're using different words. So there's definitely we've different. All, we've just there. been over the fact that you can use different words to mean the same thing. But they have different connotations. But they have different connotations. But they have different connotations. But you guys are interpreting. You guys are interpreting the words differently, so they have to be different in some way. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. they have the same meanings in this context. I disagree. Speaking. I disagree. Mm. Not well, the, way, well, the, the, question? the same effects. In the well, show. okay, freedom. What would be an example of a case where you would say that the purpose of a particular sentence in a particular context would be something other than transmitting information? Uh, to make someone feel something. Like playing a song. I would and say that that, that. Inf- I would well, say that that is information, information, information that you're trying to transmit to them. I no, just no, 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 no. no, I, I, would say, I would I actually agree with Graham here, I think. I think the transmitting of the information itself isn't the point. The effect you yes. have on them via the transmission of information is yeah. the point. That's well, fair, I'll concede that. And I, I'll just say, like, I think um, transmitting information in and of itself is, to me, I mean almost a problematic way of talking about it. Like, like we can say, oh, language is transmitting information, but that is, like, distancing itself from what the raw communication, what raw communication actually is. Like, when I think of transmitting information, what I think of is, like, you know, sending an email. Like, that's definitely transmitting information. Um, and, and, I mean... Well, ideally, it's go- definitely transmitting information. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then, okay, so Eddie, Eddie is saying some things here. He says, sometimes transmitting information is conscious, other times unconscious and involuntary. Like when you scream from pain, it's an instinct and you don't consciously want to do it. Yeah, I agree. But I mean, I, but, I, also but, but, I, also, I mean, I guess for me, transmitting information has the you, connotation, like, like, the, the, uh, Transmit the fact that transmitting implies like an active intent in doing it. Like you're transmitting, you're not just um, uh, leaking out information. Transmitting to me has this connotation of right. I I, I don't sensitive. personally have that connotation in that word, so I don't. I wasn't thinking of that. I, I meant in like the purely literal sense of just like yeah. sending out yeah. information, whether intentional or unintentional. But I yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll. Also, yeah, I do think that then maybe it's not as good for. Uh, I do think that either way, Kate agrees with your fundamental point, though. So yes, I think we do. With this, which makes the further discussion of it somewhat meaningless. The transmitting of information isn't the point; it's a means to the end. Yeah. 
Yeah, mate, yeah. Um, I think I think we need to make a distinction between like what you intend to do and what's actually happening. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Like, I mean, how, how am I create effect, not definitively creating effects itself, right? Like uh, right. Wittgenstein goes over it later. Like the point of him going over the idea of intention and the idea of will is to like later in the, uh, in this section is to get across exactly the idea that you're going for right here. Mm-hmm. And then also, I just want to reiterate, like, information to me also I have a problem with it and thinking about, like, our, you know, thoughts or ideas as information. Um, I don't... Um, I think well, that's, I, I, that's I, I, probably the fundamental objection to that is, like, um, a less like, your intuitive idea of what information is is less informed by, like, a highly scientific understanding of the world, like a fucking, like, a crazy analytical, like, this is how everything works, I've got to analyze it all. Well... The ideal uh, analytical male. Well, <laughs> I just think... The, the, the idea, analytical male. I, I do genuinely think that, like, having a computer science background expands your idea of what the word is. I, no, I, well, I, I, I think, I know, it's not that I think information oh, can't shit, be you're that, right. but I think, but I think that using it that way, and maybe, maybe No, getting actually, that, I think, I think that was a really good way of putting it. I think that I'm using it in maybe slightly, uh, slightly too, um, what, what's the word? Uh, an edu- educated way for you. No, 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 um, um technical, <laughs> technical <laughs> sense. It, I'm using yeah, I mean, I mean, the lingo, like whatever the, the technical, a technical jargon. term, yeah. jargon, technical, technical jargon. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm using it in a jargonistic uh, sense, like that I, that yeah, I didn't the, realize I was. The, the, the jargony way people use the word information when they talk about it is not like the stream of data. It's literally just like anything you can like hypothetically yeah. put on the graph. Yeah, I, 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 like I, I, really I, 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 I get that. I, I guess the issue maybe. I am nitpicky, but I just, I like to choose words that have the best connotation. I'm not looking for, sure. like, 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 yes, technically I see what you're saying, but I think especially when you're talking in well, general. Well, no, what I, what I was saying is I think that's a, that's a mistake on my part that I'm, I'm, I'm not okay. intentionally using it in a jargony sense. It's just that that's the, what, think, that, that yeah. jargon sense I, is what I usually, by I default, think of as yeah. it, which isn't as effective because only, like, two of the people in this chat, myself included, actually, like, are going to definitely get that jargon. Yeah. I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't have the same that. background as you, but I certainly interpret the word in the way I believe you're intending. Ah. Well, actually, I do think that, like, uh, I do think that even just being vaguely aware of the fundamentals of information theory might, like, give you that same sense. Yeah, maybe. I although I'm not yeah. talking about it in an information theory sense, of course. Yeah, I know, I know. But but similar. Yeah, I I, I do know. I love. I, this is like the second time information theory has come up. God information damn. theory is great. We should totally go over over information <laughs> theory at some point. Yeah, this is now a STEM group. Hell yeah. I mean, I mean, dude, I mean not, we're all STEM, aren't we? Everybody here is STEM, though, aren't they? I guess I don't know about Ed and the monkey, uh, but I think Ed is Ed is into computer science stuff because like yeah, the reason yeah, I, I guess Ed we are all here, STEM, huh? Uh, I mean, if you if you consider math to be the math part, then sure. <laughs> yeah, everybody is STEM. If you consider <laughs> math to be the math part. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually don't know. What do you do, Freedom? Oh, I work in a, a research lab, so I, I uh, work on a fungal food. pathogen. Um, oh. I, yeah. Ooh. Um, fungal pathogen. F- fungus in general is the fucking weird <laughs> shit. It's out there. Yeah. It's really not. Fucking, have you ever met a fungus? It's really not, like, from your you perspective, but you're in biology. Well, um, I'll tell you, I'm a well, fun guy. Uh, Shut the well, fuck no, up. the thing is, actually, the one <laughs> I work now. with, the one I work with is, <laughs> like, a, a type, it's just, it's not as funky, I guess, like, as some uh, of the other kinds. Um, but, um, uh, yeah. Hey, no. For now. Monkeys later. Yeah, no, um, I, I, I don't know. I definitely wasn't saying that from the perspective of like, oh yeah, weird mushrooms. No, I'm just thinking about like how they reproduce the spores and shit and like, fucking, there are a lot of things about mushrooms, about you know, fungus in general that feel like weird to me. You know? I mean, yeah, all, all life is, I mean, I love, I love biology. I mean, it's whack. I mean, it's just, and the thing that's so cool about it, I'll go on a little tangent, sorry, but I think the yeah. reason it appeals to me so much is it's such a complex system. There is so much 
that we just cannot predict about what goes on. It's so organized. Biological systems are so organized and regulated, and it's just all these crazy things happen in a very systematic way, and yet there's just so much going on we can't really predict. Like, it's so hard to predict. What the fuck? Someone's getting a call. Someone's getting a call. Is that me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fucking, um, I, I absolutely agree, right? Like, uh, there are still occasionally um, significant, like in the past decade, there have been significant discuddy, discu- I can't talk, significant discoveries. anatomical discoveries about the human body, right? Like, we've discovered, I don't remember what it is, but for instance, there's like certain interstitial tissue that we've learned exists in the past decade mm-hmm. that plays huge roles in big areas of the body that's just like, it was a whole kind of tissue that we just didn't know was there. Well, and just the fact that... We got that, DMT uh, in our brains, guys. Oh, my God. Well, the, also the, <laughs> the, the fact uh, that so much of um, what... Oops. Why is he muted? Think, yeah, I'm going to unmute him. I'm sorry. I don't know why he's muted. Um, the yeah, the fact was, that... I mean, he's um, quite muted, too, but whatever. Yeah. Um, the fact that... Now we're learning how much of, you know, like biological systems, uh, like our organisms interact with like, you know, microbes in their body. I mean, it's just like, it's so fucking important. I mean, it's, it's yeah. crazy. Um, and, and because now we have all this technology, this DNA sequencing technology and other types like metal, metabolomics and like protein, protein analysis, like all this shit, all this technology. All this shit is really so- new. It's really new, and we are, there's so much data. Like it's it's absurd, and that's why computer science is becoming even more important in biology because we just have access to all of this complex data, and we need to figure out how to analyze it. And I think right now biology really is uh, the area of science with the most um, untapped potential, or like easily untapped, like like relatively excessively oh, untapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because there, because it's we finally have the tools to really take advantage of it in a way that it wasn't possible. I mean, you read papers that were they were doing in biology like 20, 30 years ago, and they were doing some cool stuff that was severely limited. Like now, you know, you can just sequence a whole genome. Now you can just, um, like, synthesize uh, a bunch of, like, long DNA strands, like, really cheaply and easily to do cloning. Like, now, you know, cool. it's, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and the cool thing is that, like, um, biology is also, like, it's obviously deep as an ocean, but it's also, like, broad as an ocean. <laughs> like, you hear... You hear it's uh, just an ocean, yeah. You, you hear, why does a puddle deep as an ocean? But biology is just an ocean. It's just an ocean. <laughs> um, the thing is, right, like, every everything interacts in such complicated ways that we still have like, entire areas of specific knowledge that we don't understand. Like, yet. isn't isn't protein folding literally a black box still? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. We, we yes. know how to... It's, like, to predict it it's now. like a neural network type of... Well, like, well, well, well we, 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 we have ways to try and predict it. Um, uh, and it's was getting it, better. But wasn't it's, fold it's, at home a big deal not a while ago? I mean, I don't, I don't actually was, know. Yeah. I mean, I don't do, know as much about protein stuff, honestly. But even still, like, we're, we're, it's yeah. like maybe simple proteins, and maybe, but, but it's, it's like, it's still not just. Oh, we have. It's not like we hope we have the amino acid sequence, so we know how the protein 3D structure is. Like, it's not like that at all. It's like maybe we have some guesses about how it might look, and then like even if you get like even if you do like it's called X-ray crystallography, where you get the protein and look at it and like get a physical picture of the protein itself, that still may not represent what it looks like in vivo, like in the actual organism, because there's so much you don't know about like other proteins that might be binding to it, other substrates that might be binding to it that may dramatically shift it structure it's so complex um there's so much there and so many factors at play you know just depending on like what kind of um like is it is it in the middle of a membrane is it floating around in the cytoplasm you know i mean just so much we don't know um that uh affects it so so even (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> actual living grave. <laughs> That's perfect, actually, yeah. Imagine money at the vault to make an actual living grave. <laughs> um, but sorry to to quickly go back up a, a step. I think I think yeah, we are basically all STEM. We should definitely do an inf- We should definitely do some information theory later That'd on. That'd be really cool. I'll be down. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's neat. Uh, I kind of I I, I, could, I suggested that as a joke, but I do think that that would be a lot of fun if we did like uh, relatively mathematical readings. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I definitely think but we have to know, go. Through, but wait, we wait, have wait. to go through I some don't... primer on it. <laughs> No, I think here's the thing. I don't know if it would be some primarily mathematical readings. I mean, maybe we could do that. I, but I said relatively, I, not primarily. I, what, I, what I meant was like, no, I know. But what I meant, what I felt think would be maybe better is rather than to us to like read a text, a specific text, to have somebody who knows a lot about it like talk about it and present on it or something like hmm. to explain hmm. explain the basics. Just because like, I know for me at least, like I have no background in that. I feel like All something to read, unless it was intentionally like for novices or beginners. I'm, I'm going to give you all a linear, I'm going to give you all a lecture on linear congruential generators and teach you how to feed find in Minecraft. <laughs> oh, cool. I uh, looked into that stuff. That's cool. Go ahead. I mean, not right now, obviously, but. Yeah, fucking, no, that's actually a legitimately interesting math lecture. Dude, um, math is great. I love math. Math is great. But like, uh, only from great, a programming but... standpoint. I actually was going to be a math major, um, and then I decided that I didn't. I, I didn't care enough to. <laughs> but here's the thing: I actually think I would love like being a math professor or something. I I'm not willing to go through the math classes because I. Oh, I know what you mean. There are like that's, that's there are like actually, four different. I actually right plan on doing, dude. There are like the four different professions I'd be totally into doing, but I don't want to do the schooling college college. for them because it's awful. The proportion of math teachers that are relatively low level who are garbage is massive. Hmm. Well, all right. Do we want to go back? Yeah, we'll quickly get back to the text yeah. now, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it is good that we got a little bit... Um, we, we went off on a big rabbit trail, but that's fine, because... Um, Can we just trail. stop talking about how we got on rabbit trails? <laughs> well, yeah, actually, yeah, maybe, maybe that should be a rule. We don't talk about all the all the digressions we have unless it's in specifically in order to go back to the point. Well, it's just yeah, not no, no, no. about the conversation at all. What I was, what I was just about to say was... What I was what I was just about to say was going to be a fucking segue. Give me a break here. Okay, go ahead. Then sorry. Okay, what I was going to say is that I'm I'm really glad that we went on it because like uh, it is it was a good place to go on one because the idea that the idea that was just put forth about language as an instrument is a really big one. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's one of the most important points of the whole thing. Right. So and it was it, only it natural. Helps to have some time to ruminate on it and talk about stuff in relation to it. Yeah, it was only natural that we went off on a rabbit trail because, like, that is a really big idea that ha- it, it, rela- it relates to a lot of things, you know? It almost feels like, it almost feels like it's, like, the thesis of this, you know? You, you've got to beware of the, you've got to beware of, of the, the idea lobby, big idea. Well, do you think, <laughs> how do you think he means instrument? I mean, I feel like it's a very intentional choice. Oh, yeah. Uh, for it to yeah. be instrument because it refers to both a musical instrument and also a tool at the same yeah. time. It is both. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's instrument it's has like all the right connotations. It is worth remembering this was written in German, so it's possible that that wasn't a thing that happened in German. Yeah, well, but the author is dead, I, so who gives a fuck? No, but the thing <laughs> is, uh, uh, die Sprache ist ein Instrument in the German. It, uh, is, oh, is the word so, instrument? So basically, die Sprache is like Basically, language of the speech yeah, is an instrument. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, he used the word. I'm instrument. pretty sure instrument has the same has the same meaning. I so. okay, why don't you just write it in English, dude? How insane! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What is you it? I didn't know you had the version that has the translation and the. Yeah, I have the German. Yeah, I have the German. Like, yeah, yeah, I have the German. Uh, I'm a little bit side. Isn't it like a little bit page? Like every other page. I don't know German. I just have it. I, 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 I don't know Deutsch. I, you know German. Sprechen Sie uh, Deutsch. I know enough German that if you gave me uh, Die Sprache is ein Instrument, then I would have been able to I would have been able to translate that for you. I would have been able to say the language is an instrument. But I might have said the speech is an instrument. Yeah, so yeah. The thing that sucks is that I understand Bavarian German, like really southern German and Austrian German, right? 
the thing is, I have to explain it to people who don't know Bavaria, like what, what Bavaria is. So basically, I have to explain to my family that I know the German that the Nazis usually spoke. <laughs> That's I, I in fact just explained it to them, and they were kind of. Wait, are you from Bavaria? <laughs> what? Are you from Bavaria? No, I don't know why. I just can only... Like, I can understand the Bavarian accent best. Alright, well, I guess that makes you a Nazi. Let's carry on. Come on, I mean, dude. Come on. I'm dude, not a Nazi. Come on. This group came from the Zreg Discord. Like, of course, of course there's going to be some Nazis. Like, Yeah. Like, I'm, not sure I'm, not, I'm not sure that that's true, but... I don't know if our group has any. We're, 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 we're all a Nazi. And we're all one of the Afro-German soldiers who are actually, like, on the front lines fighting. Um, okay, this is great, but, like, this is pretty off-topic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so, back to, so back to languages and instruments. Yeah, the, the main problem is we're all STEM, which means we're good at thinking, which means that we can't be Nazis. Oh, um, <laughs> shit, you're right, yeah. Okay. Um, well, and anyway. also, like, this was linked in the philosophy chat from that, which was, like, initially, uh, and for a long time, like, you weren't really allowed wait. to talk in it unless you were, uh... Wait, 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 wait. I can't believe I just fucking... I can't believe I just tried to get us back on topic, and then immediately I right. thought about something else to say, okay, and you're then right. said it. You're right. Language is okay, an instrument. Okay. All right, now, language is an instrument. Does anybody else have anything else to say about the phrase language is an instrument? Uh, you want to talk about keys on the piano of the mind or something, right? Oh, oh, I was just, I was just saying, because, because we had an argument last time about how, uh, about whether or not Wittgenstein is for or against the concept of, of, uh, of, well, the phrase that he said, which was, um, language, uh, speaking a word is like striking a key on the, on the keyboard of the Keyboard of the mind. Keyboard yeah. of the eyes. The thing yeah, is, which, like, I, which, I actually have a question though. Yeah. Go ahead. Like, we aren't born with instruments, right? Because, us as humans, we have advanced intelligence, and we kind of we're born with the architecture to create and understand the, these instruments, but we don't uh, we aren't born with. I, 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 I would also argue that we aren't really born with, like the ability to like music, if that makes sense, right? Like, um, well, I, I, we're born I, with I, the I ability that, to like like the kinds of things that music is, like that kind of yeah. Pattern. yeah. But, but I don't necessarily think that, to it early on I don't necessarily life, think that a baby appreciates Mozart more than um, they appreciate um, fucking any other music. That is know, but, but, but that, that doesn't matter. That's irrelevant because, like, what appreciating yeah. music is just hearing the sounds and like having them like like strike you as notable in some well, way. Well, no, 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 no. I think no. I think that's actually a. Re- I think it's actually a really good point because, um, like. Different, like depending on where you on where you grew up, you might find you might uh, get completely different ideas out of out oh, of music. Yeah. Like, well, so while we have like we have the pattern recognition and 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 seeking and whatnot that is in place, like that will allow us to like come to like certain types of music. We what that types are, what those types are is and and what meaning we get out of them is entirely based on our, our or mostly based on our uh, our environment. Well, yeah. I mean, I was learning about, I uh, was watching some video about, um, like, how we're, I mean, most, a lot of music is really Western centric and, like, the types of, I forget what the words, but, like, uh, the way the tones, like, yeah, like, yeah. You know, set tones and semitones, like, in, like, the specific have, tunings. Yeah. And that's, like, super, but, but that's not all it is, like, for instance, in, um, I, this video, I forget, it was some kind of South I know American a lot of Indian country. music has, like, complete, has a completely different... Well, there's um, microtonality, yeah. but, but, like, but it's not just that, like, in, um, like, some, some South American type of music, I don't know why I want to say Peruvian, I might be completely wrong, it's, like, they intentionally want all the instruments to be kind of, like, tuned, like, differently from each other, because mm. that sound gives it, they, they believe it, a richer sound, a fuller sound, right. whereas, like, it, it sounds like really out of tune to the Western ear, but like to them, it sounds really bland and empty if everything is perfectly. Empty. There's actually some some like Wait. Western music that I, that like does intentional atonality, like like not even like full atonality, but like slight uh, off tuning of, of things that they can. Oh sound yeah, really I nice. mean, Wait, oh, for, like, um, I think I know what you're talking about. Wait, I, okay, it, it sounds crazy, okay, but I, I was actually living in Peru last last year. Okay. Okay. 
the thing is, there's actually a type of, like, in, in high altitude. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so there, they actually have that type of music. Okay. So I guess no, it I'm was. I remember it completely wrong. So, so it was. It, depending where it is, like, uh, where I was, it's, it's called Waino, and it's, it's cause, <laughs> It does sound out of tune to a lot of people for some reason. Um, well, not, for example, Japan. Japan's not a really Western country. I mean, uh, it, has, well, uh, it has a lot of Western uh, countries. But. Okay, okay. Quick, quick, really, really important, like, Britain? desperately important note here. Okay. Japan has a lot of Eastern influences in its thought and a lot of its culture, and it also is a really tremendous victim of American imperialism. Yeah. Yep. And yep. so a lot of its shit is, like, extremely, like, intentionally Western. Though, so, to like, a, though, though in some mm. ways, to a lesser extent than, like, South Korea. Yeah. To a lesser extent in South Korea, but, like, be careful when talking about modern Japan, but if you're talking about, like, Imperial yeah. Japan or before, then... Yeah. Okay. Um, modern Japan, Japan, dude, modern Japanese Japan has W, the English letter W, as a, le- as a letter. All right, guys. I couldn't hear, I guys, I couldn't hear either of you. We need to have a... We need to, like, try and let other people speak without interrupting. I know it's hard to do, you know, but, like, we need to try and avoid talking over everybody. Everybody okay. err on the side of letting the other person talk. I, I'm sure if everybody tries that to err on the side, way less I'm fun, sure. Uh, uh, the main okay, problem. I like the main problem. If I do that all the time, I'll just like. Not not <laughs> yeah. No, I'm way for her, so I'll just interrupt each other. It's way more fun. Not everyone's just talking at once. Yeah. We're all talking at once in favor of talking at once. <laughs> this is awful. This is so beautiful. I love it. It's perfect. It is. No, I love it too, but it's awful. No, I do think that the talking over each other can get a bit much sometimes, but I think a, a lot of the time it it, it uh, it's better, honestly. No, it's fine. It's just uh, when it gets to a certain point where for like 30 straight seconds, two people are still <laughs> Yeah, that's true. For, for a moment there, <laughs> neither of you were yielding. You were very strong. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I do, but I love those moments even more. I, no, they're <laughs> fun until they they come become too they dominate. Incomprehensible, you know? yeah, yeah. But like that type of talking over each other, like just now, it is way better. Like it's fine. Well, it's art. It's art. Yeah, that's art. Well, no, 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 no not even that. No, I mean, I mean, literally, just like just like freedom and right. I, like cutting each other off, like and, and responding before the other person is technically done is like I think. Well, that's if we fine. avoided that, it would be. Yeah, it, like interjections like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd be losing a lot of feet. Avoid. I, no, no. I'm not saying you have to let someone finish completely. Like, I, but I'm just saying, like, let's try not to talk over people for more than ten seconds. That's I, I, yeah, I, I, or more than I, like I think, two even straight seconds. I, I think the best approach here is probably to like use your words to probe whether or not they're willing to give you a second to talk, and if they are, then sorry, if they aren't, then just let them go. Guys, yeah, but like autistic? most of us are like fully autistic. <laughs> For sure. No, because that is that's <laughs> literally the thing. Is, is that, <laughs> that is the strong that, you know, issue. And the reason where I was living, right, there was a lot of, were actually a very small amount of Westerners, right. But for some reason, a lot of Japanese, even in Japan, they listen to Wino and they enjoy, it. they even dance to it, right. Oh, really? The thing is, like, oh, uh, yeah. Cool. And the thing is, it's weird because they dance to like. In a way, they like stomp. It's supposed to be. Um, uh, how do you pronounce Wino? Whatever, whatever. Oh, sorry, how do you spell Wino? H U A Y N O. Wino. It's supposed cool, to be catch Can you check it out in the voice text? So the nice. thing is, depending, depending where it is, it like sounds kind of out of tune. Um, depending, like, it, it, sound, it will sound more in tune or out of tune. It's just weird. But the thing is, um, a lot of people, for example, I, I met um, a lot of Germans, a lot of uh, French, 
Americans even, they really don't. I don't know. I, I feel like the, they didn't really like it. They yeah. Didn't really, well, it's like you know, also, um, like with East, like out of East Asian, like singing. It's explicitly the style. It's extraordinarily nasally, um, and like almost like whiny sounding. Like that's explicitly the technique used because you can be really loud. And, like that's how you project. And it's very, very unpleasant to a lot of the Western ear. It sounds horrible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chinese I opera. Bet, I, I mm. bet for a lot of people, opera would sound awful. Or, e- or even just like, uh, anything along those lines. Yeah. Um. Personally, I'm not a fan of opera, so... Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so... Fucking... This feels like an okay point to move on, because we're maybe a third little bit through the document. Oh, God. Yeah, keep going. (laughs) All right, all right. Um, Then he goes on to talk about expectation, belief, and hope. Uh, He meanders through the idea of expectation for a while. Um, You know, meandering through an idea is something that's pretty common with Wittgenstein. Yeah. Yeah. And he forms, uh, I feel like he forms, like... I really like his conversational ideas. tone, though. It's really nice. I love it. It's, it's great. I think it's great, but makes summaries really hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I also really um, like the numbered point thing. I fucking wish every yeah. philosopher did that. It's so good. Oh, a lot of them do. A lot of them do. Yeah, but not, um, not, not all of them, and I wish it was all of them. Oh, and the other thing is, too, I mean, I want to read, I'm glad we're reading this so early on, because I feel like this will help us so much when we're reading future texts. Like, That's why we went to it immediately. I, I'm so glad. Like I'm, I'm so excited. Nice. I feel like it's just really fun to read. Kind of like reading Plato. Hmm. Well, no, I, I think that's fair. I don't like Plato a lot, but Plato is is fun to read in that sense. I get what you mean. Have you yeah. guys read the <laughs> allegory of the cave? <laughs> oh, oh my fucking god! Good Plato. As opposed, well, but like as opposed to like Hegel. Or I love the jokes of Plato. Hilarious. Okay, fucking, anyway. (laughs) Uh, So, I I think in 581 there's this really important part, or at least it struck me very heavily, where... God (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that's beautiful. It's pretty beautiful. Alright, in 581 there's this really important part where he says... An expectation is embedded in a situation from which it arises. The expectation of an explosion may, for example, arise from a situation in which an explosion is to be expected. And, I don't know, it might seem at a glance like he's kind of using the... Like, maybe maybe he's doing something funky here. Um, like, when I first read this, I was like, eh, he's talking about expectation in its own terms, isn't he? But no, I think that he's specifically talking about, like, uh, you can see it right here, an expectation is embedded in a situation. He's talking about, he's talking about where you see expectations. And I think that the fundamental point that he's trying to make here is that expectation is an empirical thing. Um, he goes through this more later, right? Um, you have expectations because of what you know about the world, right? Um, Expectations aren't an a priori thing at all. And I think that's really important later. Mm. Um, Uh, It's interesting you're saying that, because, like, I just don't... I don't know. I mean, you're getting something out of it that I think... Maybe I'm just remembering it wrong, but it's just super different from Mm. what you're talking about. Uh, we're around 581 right now. Um, I'm yeah. also talking about some stuff that comes up later. Um, but just, I was focusing on, like, the difference between, like, expectation as, like, a feeling, of, like, pointing to one's, oh, like, feeling of expectation versus, like, one's awareness of the situation and, like, the comparison between that, um, those oh, two yeah. different states. That's what um, I was paying attention to. I've actually been bullshitting through my notes and not actually follow following them very closely in this That's section, okay. but I actually, That's fine. I, I also, um, the reason I'm saying that is because um, I have this thing written in my notes um, that he's actually forming two different ideas of expecting, so it's okay. not like, it's not like you're the only one that picked up on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just felt like it wasn't as important to his overall point here. Yeah. It and does, it does though seem like he's more talking about the feeling here, yeah. 
Yeah, so yeah. I feel like the emphasis yeah. is on like how like like. Well, like, he mentioned specifically the feeling, right? Um, yeah, he's talking about feeling a lot in this in this area. Like he he literally says, if I instead of saying I expect the explosion any moment now, if someone whispered it'll go off in a moment, then his words do not describe a feeling, although they may they and their tone may be a manifestation of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're not a. They don't describe the feeling, but they arise because of it. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, and then, oh, actually, I love this. I'm just going to read it because I I just like this it's section <laughs> five eighty three. Um, but you talk as if I weren't really expecting, hoping now when I thought I was, as if what were happening now had no deep significance. What does it mean to say what is happening now has significance or has deep significance? What is a deep feeling? Could someone have a feeling of ardent love or hope for one second? no matter what preceded or followed the second, what is happening now has significance in these surroundings. The surroundings give it its importance, and the word hope refers to a phenomenon of human life. A smiling mouth smiles only in a human face. I don't know if that's fair. feeling is like a crunchy feeling. What? It's like a crunchy feeling. Uh, I don't like that <laughs> word. I love that <laughs> word. Yeah, no, it's a I don't know if it's being applied perfectly here. But, but I think like, no, I think um, here it actually I think he means deep. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. crunchy. Uh, uh, fucking and, um and I, I do think that this is talking about like uh basically the perspective of it, like you uh, we yeah. we basically it's it's value to us space. Uh, yeah, this is this is building towards a larger point here, mm-hmm. which is the the very heavy contextuality of language. Yes, 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 definitely. That's Which is exactly kind of the whole point of, of, like, philosophical investigations. <laughs> yeah, um, the, like, uh, the, that's a really important point, right? Like, um, word, like, because of the contextuality of language, um, it doesn't really even, like, like, it does make sense to talk about a definition of a word, obviously, um, but it doesn't make sense to talk about the definition of a word as a concrete thing, you know? Um, and I think that the contextuality thing plays really heavily into that. Uh, what the fuck is this? It's, uh, just ignore it. Let's just ignore it. Um, no, no, I'm, funny, I'm looking at it. Because the thing is, it's funny, as, like, oh, at, at that section I read, I, like, underlined stuff and wrote, oh, context matters, like, in my, like, uh, and I wrote it into my book. And then on the next page I flipped, and the notes I had written, like, whatever, 20, I guess it was 2013, so seven fucking years ago when I first read this book. God, dear God, seven years. <laughs> Over seven years, because it was, it was, it was in the winter, spring semester, I believe. Oh, was it fall? It was seven years. Whatever it was, it was, it was, it was 2013 when I first read this book. I wrote, context is everything on the next fucking page. I was like, God damn! Look at me go! What are your little thoughts about your notes from like seven years ago? Uh, you haven't grown time. at all. You completely think the same. What? You haven't grown at all. You think completely the same. Um, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if that's maybe, maybe I guess, I, but or maybe it's just that I get the same things out of the text. Like I, and I, I see it when I see something I've written before, and it's the same thought I have now. I feel good because I feel like. I was I was feeling it and understanding it then too, and I feel like it's consistent. Like what I'm seeing, the value and meaning I'm finding in the text is it's it feels like oh it's more reliable. Like the conclusions I make it more reliable because I come to the same ones even after reading it a second time. That's how I see it. That's fair. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Fucking, um, yeah, th- like, I feel like, uh, I feel like there's some, a certain disconnectedness about this entire thing. And the, di- the disconnected feeling doesn't stop in this section either. But I feel like at the very least, in this section, he does a really, he, there's a really strong common thread here, which is throughout, like, the next few pages, um, if not, like, half of the rest of the book, um, the main point is the ways in which context matters, you know? Mm-hmm. Um. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba. All right. Then, yeah, he jumps to familiarity, unfamiliarity, and recognition, which does play into that. Um, does play into the context thing, but in a different way. 
Um, and if we jump ahead a little bit, uh, let's see here. Why do I jump so far ahead? One second. What's <laughs> in this section? Oh, yeah, this is just more of this section, okay. More of talking about the same thing. Uh, so yeah, in 601, um, he's got, in my, in my, uh, in my copy, it's actually bolded here. Um, nice. oh yeah, uh, oh, I do yeah. Think, same here. I do think, I do think it's really important. Um, he says, when I talk about this table, am I remembering that this object is called a table? Um, did you recognize your desk when you entered the room this morning? Uh, and I should say, no doubt, certainly. And yet it would be misleading to say that an act of recognition had taken place. Of course, the desk was not strange to me. I was not surprised to see it, as I should have been if another one had been standing there or some unfamiliar kind of object. Um, and I mean, he's, he's not very, he's, he's not very, uh, oblique about his point here. Uh, he, he's straight up just saying familiarity isn't an active thing. Um, it just happens. You well, know, um, what I was saying is that you really only become aware of familiarity if you are expecting something that isn't familiar. Like when you come back to your hometown, yeah. you sort of are anticipating it to be different. And then when it's familiar, it's because it's in contrast to your expectation that things will have changed or it's like surprising, like in a positive way. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, but this isn't the, well, but this isn't the surprising kind of familiarity. This is an entirely expected familiarity. Where nothing has changed, yeah. you didn't expect anything to change. You're not looking well, for any that, sort of change. I think that either way, either way, familiarity is fundamentally tied to expectation. Hmm. That's fair. And also, I want to. I just wanted to make the point because this is something I wrote. Like, do you recognize your desk when you entered your room this morning? Um, and like, what is like the recognition? Like, uh, recognition um, happens like. Oftentimes, it'll happen automatically. It won't be something you're aware of, but it does happen, like an automatic recognition. Like, you see yeah. a chair, you know it's a chair, and you sit in it. You're just not pointing to that recognition. You're not pointing mentally to that awareness. But it is happening. It's functionally happening. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, what the fuck does this mean? Sorry, just ignore it. Why do I look at every meme that you send? What the fuck? <laughs> I God. also do, yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Good luck, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I was that way with my old job. It was, it was not a good job. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. No, seriously, jobs that, that do that, though, are so fucking terrible. Yeah. I, I just, uh, okay, anyway. Uh, fucking... Ooh, I have to deal with that shit. So if, it, if that happens a lot at a job, then it probably means that they have a lot of situations where people are like, fuck no, I'm not going to work today. Usually, yeah. Uh, that, that, or they just literally don't have enough people who sign up for it to consistently step. Wait, who muted microwave? He wants to be muted uh, for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay, that's well. Oh. Anyway, uh, so, uh, fucking, what do I have written in my notes here? Uh, um, stuff we've already gone over, stuff we've gone over. Oh, 607. Oh, 607. It is long. <laughs> it is a long boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like a page. Over I, a page. I like this. I like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the very, uh, so I put here, in the absolutely massive 607, he goes through a person figuring out the time in their head. And how one would like to say, and this is a really important idea, and I think it's a tool that we can all take forward um, when analyzing things. Um, he goes through a person figuring the time in their head. And yeah. how one would like to say that some particular process goes on in their head, a picture of a clock, for instance, and that it's important to resist temptation to create a picture where there actually is none, um, as if its postulation is necessary. Um, so what he's talking about here is like there isn't there isn't a picture of a clock that you're going in that you're going through when you're feeling out the time, or at least there isn't usually, right? No. Um, and the when you try to explain that phenomenon further, um, you should really work hard to, like, not to create some sort of, not to create some sort of abstraction that isn't there just in order to feel more comfortable about understanding how it works. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, um, because you're not, you're not reading it off of some inter- internal, like, visual clock or something. You're just, 
you yeah, get a vague a, impression of it based on on the uh, on probably your knowledge of what time it was previously. Yeah, you have an, impre- you an impression of it from a knowledge of how time passes normally. Yeah, yeah it's just it's, this is what I was getting at. It's a very sensational thing. It's it's very much yeah. you just feel it. Like it feels like it's been ten minutes. Like your body uh-huh. just has like that um, has an idea of what it feels like when a certain amount of time passes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's also easy to fuck this up, right? Like, you can think what amount of... It's very obvious. Right now, it feels like it's been about two hours since we started the meeting. Right? <laughs> it's not a... It I, I, I don't have to agree. No, it, it feels more like an hour. Yeah, it feels like more like an hour to me. Really? Oh, no. I, I feel like two hours. Uh, it feels really like we've only had about an hour of the discussion, word. because but that's because the first, like, hour of discussion was like, very little and then well, yeah. started late. Um, and it, started we didn't start talking about the work until, like, an hour in. Yeah. It's also worth remembering that, like, it's definitely a, it's one of those practiced empirical things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you have a feeling, but the feeling is itself based off of checking your own work, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, like, like you, the feeling, um, the, the feeling is based off of all the times where you have thought to yourself, how long has it been? And then you've said, oh, it feels like it's been about 15 minutes. And then you check your clock and it's, been ten minutes, or it's been half an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's based off of all of those times where yeah. you get it wrong. That right. feeling adjusts. Yeah, yeah. And it's also worth remembering that, like, um, you can like there are systemic biases in how humans perceive time. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't actually remember any of them off the top of my head, unfortunately. Yeah. There are systemic biases in how in everything about humans perceive everything. So oh, yeah, yeah, I think that's entirely yeah. fair to like just even say without having sp- ever had specific examples. There are systemic biases in humans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and can I just say also I love like how he uses the term atmosphere to describe like like something a characteristic of guessing the time as if you were surrounded by an atmosphere, a uh, characteristic of doing so. Or like he ta- talks yeah. about um like. It would never have occurred to me to think that that sentence had such an aura if I had not thought of how one might say it differently. I mean, like, just talking about how there are these really, I mean, he's using imprecise language because it is a, by nature an imprecise experience of just a feeling, an impression. Um, and I like that because I think it's really much more true to our internal experience than trying to say, like, there's some clear, you know, rational method or calculation we go through internally. Yeah. And then someone, and Ed, Ed said, if you extend that to your whole life, would you prefer to end up feeling like no time passed or that time passed slowly? Wow, big brain questions here. Big brain. <laughs> all right, I'd like to direct all of your attention to 611. Right. Um, uh, the second The second paragraph of 611, uh, mm-hmm. Wafi. That's all uh, I have to say. What does uh, that yes, mean? Yes, Wafi. <laughs> what is that? Is that uh, it's what? It's what? Not bring it's about. Wafi. Like right. What can I bring about then? Like Wafi. Um, like Wafi. I, I, Hoi Poipa keeps talking over me. Um, fucking. Is oh, am I? Wow. Yeah, you, you are. Um, by accident, I think. <laughs> uh, it's an, it's an OCR error. Yeah. Um, there are lots okay, of OCR, you know, know, know most of the things I've seen that have like OCR errors, like still have like the original scan over top of it, so it at least looks right, and you just can't search it right. But this, it's like it, they just replaced it with the uh, with the OCR text, so sometimes you just got weird shit in there. Okay, no, I, I really think that what they should do is they should literally just replace it with a picture of the text. If that's what um, they do, that's what they do for a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, um, it, I, like it's easy to have an like it's easy to use a mathematical model um, with a with any sort of recognition software in order to create a number which is how how sure it is of each thing that it mm-hmm. does. So you could drastically reduce how often that's a problem if below a certain certainty threshold it was just like nope we're not using the text we generated here. Or if below a certain threshold you just have somebody look at it. Yeah, well that's what they did for a long time with uh, captures. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when you would put in words for CAPTCHAs. I mean, that's good because CAPTCHAs basically used as a method of, of scanning text and, like, OCR, I guess, so. And yeah, uh, optical character recognition, using yeah. human eyes. Yeah. All right, let's... Well, well yeah, using human eyes to, to do it and then... <laughs> so I can let the word go. Yeah, also generate uh, a bunch of training. Like, 
I didn't expect to get a serious tangent when all I wanted to do was point out Waffy. I know. Waffy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, Waffy. Uh, Wa- Waffy, can I bring about then? Yes. Uh, okay, so. Uh, where is it here? Um, Wittgenstein starts talking about willing for a bit. Um, bringing mm-hmm. things about, that kind of thing. Um, I do think it's a very important point here. Uh, the very important point here in 6.15, uh, which is willing, if it is not to be a sort of wishing, must be the action itself. Um, hmm. It well, cannot be allowed to stop any worse of the action. I, I and, do want to... Yeah? So you can continue. Well, I, I was just going to say, this is in reference, I don't know how familiar you are with, like, old school philosophy. It just cause it reminds me of in my... Uh, While you're lying. Can, is it better now? It's fine on my end. No, I didn't hear you lying. Wait. Really? Uh, Tell me, I think it's your issue, yeah. Well, uh, Discord says my connection is fine. Okay, can you say it again? Uh, well, it just reminds me, like, I took a, a class, of, like a history of philosophy class, basically. Hmm. Um, and so it reminds me of examples, I forget exactly who it was, but this example of, like, the arm moving and, like, um, what that, like, what that entails is, like, a classic example when talking about the mind-body problem, like, what is causing your arm to move? Like, is it your mind? Like, what, like, what, how does the, your mental substance interact with the physical substance to make your mind move? Mental um, substance. <laughs> I, yeah, well, because well, the mind-body, well, because the mind-body problem is a problem with dualism, so it, it, yeah. mental sub- substance is exactly the right term. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I wasn't aware. Issue. I wasn't aware of the context. I thought yeah, it was yeah, no way. posing that. No, 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 no. But um, I guess um. Always ask because you know, not every, yeah. This is this is a book club. We don't we don't like assume that everyone has like full context, and we can't even assume yeah. that everyone's read the thing we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, so but, it's totally valid. But that's um, just like the context for that example, um, and like thinking about what causes, you know, what is the cause of um, um, an action you choose to make? Like, what causes that? Like, like because because the you know mm. you can say, oh well, like the reason you physically move is because you you mentally you know, tell yourself to do it. But then, what's the cause of that mental thing? You know. Um, and oh, so, okay, and then you get into the issues of like. Um Dualism can only make sense if it's uh, only interactionist in the direction from material to immaterial. Otherwise, it gets into, like, fucking problems with science. Like, uh, what you can discover is is just, like... Wacky. It's just spooky. Because, I mean, you think about... I think the only only dualism that could even make sense is non-interactionist dualism, personally. Like... Uh, yeah, non-interactionist, dual, non-interactionist it, dualism is basically uh, meaningless. Is the well, issue. no, but but, yeah. well, but at least, yeah, it's, I mean, but, it, but it doesn't, but it's not like. I like, mean, it's it, stupid it to talk about the substance of reality. Reality is all made of one, like it's a. Th- it's, one, it's not. It's useless to think of it as like to separate it. It's. it's yeah, well, yeah, because if you separate it, then either it interacts and thus is functionally yeah. monist, or it doesn't interact and there is no meaning to be had by postulating that it that it is dual. I mean, metaphysics in general trying to talk about the substance of reality. Well, well no, 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 no. no. Uh, the, impor- the, important, the important thing isn't whether or not there's meaning to be had in a statement. It's whether or not it lets you defend religious precepts. That's <laughs> that. That's usually I, well. That is usually why people go with any sort of dualism, especially on interactionist dualism. So yeah, yeah. that that seems. Fair. <laughs> I don't know if, if anyone disagrees with that. It's, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> continue. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So fucking. What do you guys have? What do you guys have to think about this? Fucking willing, if it is not to be a sort of wishing, must be the action itself. Well, I, I like this. Um, in a sense, but it's, it's kind of prescribing a definition. I don't think it's necessarily, um, describing how we actually use it. It's just saying yeah. if we're going to try and make a distinction about certain things that go on when we do stuff, um, it's, it's more useful to, you know, define will in a way. I, I think, yeah, I, I think, think realistically will in the sense that it's used is, it can refer to wanting or as, as, uh, as actually, no, as the action, right? Because it, it frequently is used to describe the sort of wishing, yeah. even though it doesn't have an actual effect. 
Yeah, even if I, in my notes here, I have um, before, like I didn't say it out loud, but before I even have the quote from 615, I have, first important thing, Wittgenstein doesn't mean willing in the same sense as wanting. Yeah. Yeah, Th- those two words are very vital here, even though I don't think he says wanting, he says wishing, if anything. Yeah. Um, I'm talking, yeah, it, this section was hard for me to read. Yeah, I but to so be like he's saying, because he's saying, like, if it is not to be a sort of wishing, yeah. then it must be actually yeah, saying, because those are the only two types a he's saying. Or just in order to have a framework to talk about it so that we're not mixing definitions up. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, think I think that's, I think that's, that's, that's important. That's what, yeah. that's what we have yeah. to do. Yeah, exactly. I, think, I think it's totally fair to be like, to say, like, yeah, it's it means, like, either wishing for something to happen or actually just acting in in order to have it happen, because there isn't really another definition outside of those. Well, this reminds um, me also of Sartre right. and, um, like, his uh, talking about how um, basically if you, like, think um, the way you act is the way, like, uh, everybody should act given your particular situation, or you, ha- you have to think about it that way. Um, I don't know if anybody is familiar with that. It's Archer at all. Never mind. So I have I have something to say about um, if willing isn't wishing, it's a sort of action. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, what if um, you think you're doing something, but you're not actually doing it? Like it, like it feels like you are, but it's not actually happening. Are you still willing it? Uh, I would say that the answer is yes, yeah. if willing is a kind of wishing, and no, if willing is the action itself. I would like, say that well, yes, uh, if the willing well, is the it's not really, itself. it's type of wishing. Like, like, it's, it's, it's the act, I, I would say it's the act of, like, attempting to do the action, not like... I agree, I yeah, agree. Yeah, so even if you think you're doing the action, but you're not, because you're, like, hallucinating or something, that's still willing. In, well, I agree. Yeah, it's it's the yeah. act of attempting to do the action an act if, if it's not having any effect? It, it, well, it describes yeah. the mental state you're in, because what to will is, it's a mental state. Yeah, I think even even state. even in the way that Wittgenstein is, is describing it here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Willing is the mental state of like attempting to do something. Um, I'm I'm squinting a little bit here, but okay. <laughs> well, that seems to be the way he's defining it. That seems that's how I would define it. Yeah. Generally. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean that. Like, and again, this is willing in yeah. this particular type of willing that he's using in this section, not the actual way we use the full use of the word to will. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I wonder where the bold text in the in the scan comes from. Because uh, like, there's no clearly, bold text. There's no bold text here. Yeah. No, but I mean, like, it's clearly based on something. Like, maybe it might be just like a weirdness in it, but like that. It's strange because, like, all of 601 through 602 is, like, fully bolded. There's no, like, little bits that are missing. But then, well, like, um, like uh, part what, midway through 618, just the word one is bolded. I feel like if you, bolded any, if, you, if you bolded any two propositions in here, um, you would probably feel correct in claiming that they're important. But that's there's nothing fair. bolded. There's nothing should be bolded. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I, I want, that's what I mean. I'm wondering, like, what's caused the things to be bolded? From the scan mm. problem. From the scan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. Ob- it's obviously probably a scan problem. I'm just wondering what went to. Yeah. Just, I, uh, this thing seems to have been scanned, like, decades ago. Oh, yeah, no, it's clearly OCR. not a good scan. <laughs> uh, like, this page number up here says I6OE. Yeah. <laughs> And then it's I six I I don't think there's a single exclamation point exclamation point in this whole book. I'm pretty sure it's all just ones or something else. <laughs> no, there are exclamation points. I think I think there are. No, 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 no. It's rare. No, no, I don't think there are any in the scanning. Oh. Um. Well, I can <laughs> oh, no, let's try. I'm gonna scan. I'm gonna search. Yeah, you can control F exclamation point. I don't think there are. No, I think it's failed to note it, to recognize any. Oh wait, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Muscles and joints. Yeah. <laughs> Where muscles and joints. Oh, okay, yeah, there's, cool. a spit, there's a spit which is like, uh, and nothing is more wrong-headed than oh, literally in the last section, like yeah, right, right six twenty-four, ninety-three, in six ninety-three, the last proposition. Hmm. Also six twenty-four, like right after where we are, like. Has, okay, I guess I guess they I guess they did a better job. They do at least have some exclamation points. It's not perfect. There are a lot of issues with this scan, but they, they do think they're awesome. Wait. 
Uh, fucking. I don't know what you're sorry, talking fucking. about. I see 173 exclamation points. In this yeah, no, I do too. I do too. It's fine. Yeah. There are plenty of exclamation points. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Enough so about the scan. You're not bitching about the scan. <laughs> the scan is trash. It is trash. It is trash, to be fair. You guys should just buy the physical book. Oh, man, am I still on 80? But you no, can't control F search a physical book. True. No, you can't. Mind you, mind you, you can barely control F search the, this book, but like. Okay, okay. So, fucking. Oh, actually, does... but you know what? Actually, just, just, though, my edition has an index of like specific words, so like paradox, or like, 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 like terms, so like yeah, it's sort well, of like a control F. It's sort of like a control F, because if there's like, you can just look through the index for a word, and like, it'll tell you where it appears in the text. But it's slow. That is interesting. But also, it's very slow, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> I almost find it entertaining. Um, that... Bye, microwave. See ya. Oh, bye. I, I almost find it entertaining that in this book, which um, very strongly makes the claim that words don't have singular meanings at all, in, like, any sense, has an index which organizes it by word. <laughs> that is entertaining. I mean, it's not, like, it's not like contradictory, but it's very funny. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's almost fun, right? Like, um, you can find all the instances of, of a specific word as an exercise, and then look at the variousness of which their uses are. Um, yeah. Or look at the various their uses. <laughs> yeah. I like um. That. Fucking all right. So, what does it mean to will then, with this, uh, with this will not as a sort of wishing? Um, right. In six twenty one, he says, "What is left over if I subtract the fact that my arm goes up from the fact that I raise my arm? Are the kinesthetic are the kinesthetic sensations my willing?" He also talks about using electric currents to provide the kinesthetic sensations involuntarily, meaning that those can't be the willing. Hmm. Yeah, I would say that, that. Well, yeah, it's not the it's not the it's not the feeling of of feeling like your arm uh, goes up. It's like the intent behind causing your arm to go up, whether or not you succeed. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. In other words, um, in the sense of willing in six fifteen, um, in the sense of willing in six fifteen, um, yeah. we've kind of proposed something vacuous. You know. Well, not vacuous. Um, it's well, willing if it does not be a sort of wishing? It's not something vacuous. It's not even to be involved. It's like, it's literally like describing the, the, the act of attempting to, like, for this example, raise your arm, right? Even if you don't have an arm and don't even have the, uh, the, um, uh, what, what ghost arm, whatever, the, you know, the, the fake sensation yeah, of having yeah. one after, after it's removed. Yeah. Like, it's the act of attempting to do, uh, to do that, whether or not you can even, like, whether or not it's even a thing that you can do, like, anymore. It's not talking about the feeling of doing it, or the, uh, or the, or the intent of doing it. It's like the actual doing, even if you can't. Alright, that's all right, it. Yeah. If that, if yeah, that's he does coherent. have a where he talks about how one might want to, um, think of Doing as completely separate, so to speak. Where does he say that? Um, uh, it was it was a really uh, it was a section I found really uh, really. I do seem to have a definite sense separate from all exist uh, from all experience. Yeah, this section felt kind of annoying to read to me, but mm-hmm. like, he, That's fair. He, I think it's because the concept is a very difficult to like. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I just talk about talk about it's just because we don't have words that are very clear on it. Yeah. Like we're I trying think the to way separate, language we're trying to separate that. out things that we're talking about, but there aren't separate words for them. Yeah, yeah will is fucking, it's complicated. Um, mm-hmm. It's really complicated, and uh, what constructs you use to talk about it. Um, my like, word for this now, my name. word for this specific concept is now Wittgensteinian will. Yeah. Well, I, and I really like, though, like in 618, um, like he says, like, uh, like it's just sort of hit home the point of what willing is. It's like it's one can say I will, but my body does not obey me. But not my will does not obey me. Like it's that's just, not what's you know, in our translation. Uh, that is what, oh, that's what it says in mine. 
Oh, so you said, what was it, 619? I thought you said 618. Oh, 618. Okay, never mind. Sorry, yeah. And it's hurt. Yeah. And I, yeah, think yeah. That, I think that it's like you can't fail to will. You can't try to will. You just will. Yeah, because will and, is the act of trying. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right. Um, which I, I like. I think that illustrates like what he's getting. Yeah, I do really like the concept that. he's building for Will and what it is. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And one uh, might say I can always and in as much as I can never try to Will. Yeah, and I think it's important to know like he's talking about Will like as a noun or as a verb, yeah, not as like a noun, like the like Will thing. as a thing. It's like explicitly just a verb. Like willing is a verb. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, we're not talking about one's will. We're talking about willing as an action. Yeah. Oh, and if you didn't see this in the chat, um, there's this thing. There's this thing that I I think is kind of cute. Um, in German, uh, the word for want is will. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that, that's kind of nice. Um, I, I heard the hypothesis before that us fucking Englishmen, um, we decided that we slowly morphed the word for want into. Uh, inevitability. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know how accurate that is, but that's entertaining at the very least. (laughs) That's like a concept. Yeah. I don't know. That's probably not accurate etymology, but it's fun. It's probably not accurate etymology, and if it is, it doesn't really say that much about our intents or anything. It's just... It would just be ironic. Yeah. It it is a nice little... um, Or serendipitous, even... It's a nice little note on the shared source of um, the idea in our language, in English, of the will as the thing that you exercise, and will as a word that means, like, uh, something, something that's going will to happen. happen. Yeah. Yeah. Like, will as, like, mm. the future tense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will as in shall. Yeah. yeah. Will as in shall. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see the shared connection there. I fucking um, love that English has so many words for, like, in a lot of cases, words that are, like, identical in their meaning, so you can, like, elaborate on which version of what word you mean by using a different word. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, a lot of I actually, like, unironically, I think that's really useful, and I love it. Um, I think that's a thing for most languages, and it's a good thing. I, I only natively speak English, so I couldn't say. Well, I don't know. My mom uh, was telling me she was having trouble, like, she's she's full-on Taiwanese, right, and having trouble, like, she was talking about some more, like, I think she's writing journaling about her experiences and, like, some more, you know, of her philosophical observations about life, and just saying how she was having a lot of trouble putting it into Chinese. Granted, she's been living in the States for a long time, but she just said it's so much harder to find the words, like, it's so much easier in English to describe a lot of, like, these subtleties. Well, and we do have a um, lot of... more words. We do have yeah. a lot of words. Um, yeah. Well, and I know in Japanese for, like, a lot, like, there's not, like, a very, I don't think there's a way of specifically clarifying, like, uh, just a bit of weird Japanese linguistic history. I used to, like, the words for, like, the word for green and blue was the same word for, like, a long time in Japanese. Like, they weren't considered. Mm-hmm. Oh, so it's the in a lot of ancient languages. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. actually really common for yeah. relatively different colors to have, um, mm-hmm. to, like, like as an example, right? Most languages don't it don't have a name at all for the color brown. Really? Um, yeah, there's been yeah. a distinction between uh, red and brown for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Here's the thing: brown is just like orange. Orange is already a pretty specific color, right? We didn't have a word for orange until super recently. Well, yeah. Like um, brown is like is like burnt reddish orange. Like it's yeah, it's dark orange. Yeah. It's like a very specific... Well, well, it's not just dark, it's also slightly... It's also usually slightly less um, saturated. Have, have, you ever, have you ever been in a fucking... If, what do you call it? Have you ever been in a... On one of those color wheels making art mm-hmm. or something? Fucking and, trying to think, and trying to get brown, brown. yeah. Brown literally just dark orange. If you go to orange, go to orange, and then just pull it down. Yeah, if you it, go to a... Yeah, you... yeah. I, I usually say slightly less saturated, too. But yeah, in an HSV sense, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, definitely if you want to get, like, the ideal rich brown, then, like, you fucking might need to move it around a bit. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it is, yeah, if you, yeah, you take orange, maybe a slightly redder orange, and just uh, slightly desaturate and turn, and, uh, and de, um, 
Turned on the brightness, yeah. It'll be as right. much as I love talking about color theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so can, oh, yeah, this is fundamentally related to language, which is... Um, we were talking about actually, language, yeah. <laughs> people have actually observed patterns in how languages develop uh, names for colors, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it oh, turns yeah. out... That, uh, it turns out that uh, there's usually certain colors that people come up with names for first. Mm-hmm. Um, Black and white, correct? Yeah, I don't remember exactly which ones they tend to start with. Brown, Brown green, 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 Black uh, and or red, green, green and... Uh, I don't know, I don't think green is one of the earlier ones. Yeah, because everything so, around us is green. You would think green and... Well, I guess green and blue would be like... Well, blue is actually very uh, recent color. Because it used to just all be green. I mean, in yeah, a lot of like languages, it be green. In a lot of older languages, green and blue are basically yeah. the same. Yeah. Yeah. Because there wasn't a green pigment. Yeah. yeah. Indigo is like something that was only found in the New World. It's only been around for a couple centuries. Hmm. Green pigment. Yeah. Fucking yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure black, white, and red are, like, the first three colors, because obviously, like, how bright something is, and then, like, the color of blood. There's usually yeah, also, well, no, you usually have a word for some, for, like, at least, like, blue, uh, blue slash green, uh, because yeah. it's extremely prevalent around us. Yeah. Okay. Even yeah. more, even I, more when most languages were developing, like, earlier languages were developing than, than now, but, like, even now, it's fucking everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah now yeah. everything's gray. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm looking around. I'm looking around. And I'm, we're doing a Dude, pretty I good job. Dude, right outside my window is green. Like, come on. It was just a depression yeah. meme. Ah, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, it could have been a dog meme. True. Real yeah. dog hours. I, I am a dog. I mean, I'm I look at like, I look right at my Discord and I see like names in orange. Like, come on, it's everywhere. <laughs> Well, in fairness, the colors of the digital spaces we design are going to be much more colorful, unless you're a programmer, in which case everything's black. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just looked it up, right? And uh, there's this uh, theory called the Berlin K theory. It says that uh, stage one is black and white, stage two is red, stage three is yellow, green, blue, and brown, and then uh, finally uh, pink, purple, orange, and gray. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Neat. Yeah, so like what colors, yeah, what colors we, we tend to develop names for first. Interesting. I'm interested that gray is so far down. Me right? too. That is funny. Huh. All right. Uh, anyway, let's continue. Yeah. Anyway, back to the text, <laughs> I think. Yeah, okay, so... so uh, around like 624-ish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so what I'm looking at, what I'm gonna look over now is like 628-ish. Um, he's talking about voluntary action. Um, and he says, one might say, voluntary movement is marked by the absence of surprise. And now, I do not mean you to ask, but why isn't one surprise here? When pe- uh, I'm moving over to 629, you, you know. When people talk about the possibility of foreknowledge of the future, they always forget the fact that prediction of one's own the fact of the prediction of one's own voluntary movements. Um, I don't uh, fucking... What well, I have, a note, I have a note written here. Oh, the first, I want to read my translation because it's a little different. Uh, okay. 29. Go ahead. When people talk about the possibility of foreknowledge of the future, they always overlook the case of predicting one's voluntary movements. I feel like it's a much clearer way of saying that. Um, yeah. I and feel like I got it from either. Like, well, yeah, I don't, sure I have. don't, like, in, in past tense, think of those as different sentences, so I guess I understood it, but, <laughs> well, yeah, uh, cause I can't think of which different. But, but you're like, right, that is probably a little more under, more easily, more easily yeah. understandable, probably. But then, um, I have this note here <laughs> that I wrote in 2013. Will <laughs> is a form of predicting the future. Uh. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, I suppose that, that makes sense. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Um, what I see from, um, I don't know. Let me just read out the rest of my notes here, because I think I actually kind of disagree with that. Um, I do want to go back to 617, where he says that uh, the knowledge that your fingers won't move when not touched. So if we go back to 617, because I know there are people who actually haven't done the reading. Um, if we cross our fingers in a, sp- in a certain special way, we are sometimes unable to move a particular finger when someone tells us to do so, 
if he only points to the finger, merely shows it to the eye. If, on the other hand, he touches it, we can move it. One would like to describe this experience as follows. We are unable to will to move the finger. Uh, the case is quite different from that in which we are not able to move the finger because someone is, say, holding it. One now feels inclined to describe the former case by saying one can't... Yeah, and then he talks about will, which he goes on to clarify later. Um, yeah. But I, I want to talk about this case in which because, ca- in which case yeah. d- In which case, Wittgenstein, contradicting himself, says that you can fail, that you can try to will to do something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he, he clarifies things a little bit further, I feel yeah. like. Um, I don't think he's saying you can fail. I'm just saying it's like, we ha- it's in order to will something, you have to, like, know what you're trying to will. Because, like, yeah. it's just, yeah. like... He doesn't yeah, I think that, that. the second paragraph of 617 is exactly what you're saying here. That in this case, the finger, as it were, paralyzed, the finger is, as it were, paralyzed until we feel a touch on it, is shown by experience. It could not have been seen a priori. And mm-hmm. I think this is really important because uh, it seems like what he's saying is that what falls under the realm of the voluntary and uh, is, like, a matter of empirical analysis, right? Hmm. Which I think disagrees with what you were saying earlier about... I don't remember exactly what it was. Well, I said will is a form of predicting the future. I mean, I I wanted that no... That no is just to say, like, when you will something, it's like you know or are trying to... like are are making a prediction about what's going to happen. I mean, it may not actually happen because, like, you fail to will it or something, but, like, it is, like... When you will something, you are saying, this is going to happen. Well, not now you failed to will it. Your, your will failed to become enacted. Well, no, no, no. But you I didn't like fail to will it. Then. You failed to make it real, but you didn't, yeah, fail, yeah. You didn't fail to yeah. will it. Yeah, exactly. I, I, think we actually, I think we actually agree on this now that I think about it more. Yeah. It seems like you're using the word will in about the same way that I'm trying to use the word voluntary here. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the point is that when you, when you will something... Or when you do something voluntarily, your prediction, you're predicting the future in that you are saying, you're, you're saying to yourself, sort of, this action is going to have this effect. Well, yeah, I mean, well, and, and yeah, willing to do something and then it happening is voluntary action. Yeah. At least you, at the very least using Wittgenstein, Wittgenstein's definitions. Yeah. Um, this is funny, by the way. Um, I have, I'm such an expressive person with my hands when I talk, and I do it so fucking involuntarily. Um, I like I, I did this big sweep with my arm as if moving it voluntarily, right? Right, right as I was saying it voluntarily. Yeah, and I can I can talked. imagine the motion you probably did there. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's fucking. It makes me feel silly when I actually think about it, but like it does. It, it helps me think a little bit. I'm still moving my hands. I'm fucking blowing them around helplessly right now. It's all good. I'm a very expressive person when stop, I talk. Stop thinking about your own me- about your own motions <laughs> in a meta sense. It gets confusing for yourself. <laughs> yeah, it gets confusing really quickly. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's fucking. It's a bit of a disaster. I, I feel I feel like my ability to communicate is hampered by not being on a video call almost. You know, <laughs> I, 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 face reveal so when face right now. Turn it on. Feel right. Now. Yes. Turn that cam on. Do it. Turn that cam on. Yeah, sure. Turns out he's completely naked. Turns out I'm completely naked. No, yeah. I'm not naked. Not Fucking wearing pants. <laughs> you wouldn't even you wouldn't even be able to see if I'm wearing pants. Like take my yeah, pants like off. Who's, and who's ca- dude? <laughs> cam. Like All right, fucking. Let's see here. All right, now I feel like I'm bitching out if I don't do it. Oh, nice! I'm excited. Oh my god, there he is! Hello. Like, do, you have, Hello do you have long hair? Oh my god. Yes, it's quite long. Not dude, bad. Everyone have long my hair is pretty point? long too. I have long hair too. Fucking long hair is weird because it's like. <laughs> Also, if you wonder if you're wondering why I have a locker in my room, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is weird. I will never again imagine a frog talking. <laughs> Man, yeah, no, I, I like, dude, I actually I love having I love being able to see your face. I love seeing people's faces, honestly. Like we can make, we can make this a video call. Alright. At this point in the recording, there is severe lag. None of this bit is recoverable, but it was also mostly just talking about 
the fact that we were on video, so nothing of importance was lost. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's a different kind of pressure, I swear. Um, all right, so... I got it. I got it. I'll, I'll, I'll continue doing the thing soon. One more time. Okay. Give me a second. <laughs> you can. Oh! There we go. We had the wrong one selected. Hello! I exist now. Yeah, I was like, geez, this should be working. I had... You can't thought this of this. Is... Hey. I kind of was doing it for a full throw. Yeah, no, it's full. It's that's actually amazing. Really incredible. That's yeah. fucking amazing. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Wow. Honestly, we all have really memorable hair. We do We do all have really memorable hair. How is yeah. your hair memorable? Fiber? It's not memorable at all. It's just like you need a haircut. You just need a haircut. <laughs> Dude, that's all it is. Dude, everyone here needs a haircut, let's be fair. I have, uh, I have a, like, well, I mean, okay, hair. Freedom can get away with not having a haircut, but, like... I haven't cut my hair in two years, honestly. Yeah. Not at I, all. I, I also haven't cut my hair in a similar length of time. Not gonna lie. Yeah. I I mean, yeah. Hair like a you know what? Hair, like, you just, you just put, you put essential oils in it, and it's totally healthy. Uh, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, no, actually, oil, essential yeah. oils are great for skin and hair. They're garbage for everything, anything else. Like, they're actually okay, garbage. Okay, just fucking people who breathe it in, like, vape it. Thing. Are going to die. Well, no, because <laughs> what you can do is you can do is you can use like like call it a vaporizer, but you just like it just like puts it makes it smells nice in your room. Like that's the thing. Like, sure, like, but nice. essential oils are not something you should be breathing in as a general rule. They're incredibly yeah, unhealthy too. Well, to breathe in a lot of them all at once, but if you just have to, it's like it's like burning a smelly candle in your room. Like, what's the difference? The difference is really what specific bad. is in the chemical. Is, is, is it like what chemicals are in the uh, are in the candle? Yeah, I mean, essential oils are going to be a kind of uh, a kind of specific thing, right? Like it's going to depend a lot on which one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, a lot of them are really bad to inhale. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah. Like which one? Not all of them. Um, a lot of I need like to a know lot of the ones that. Sure. Um, a lot of the ones that have like disinfecting effects are really bad to inhale, from what I've heard. Uh, but I don't remember specific. All of them have disinfecting no. effects. Ingest disinfectant. Do it. Will I cure coronavirus? Do you think if we just inject people with? Bleach? For sure. Yeah, but if we just inject bleach, they'll do it. Yeah. Um, yes, inject straight out the door. Guys, I guys, I voted for Trump in 2016. Oh God, did you? <laughs> that doesn't even surprise yeah. me. I gotta, gotta check out this hat that my dad Oh my god, you to. gotta... No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. That's so perfect. It's I mean, so I'm good. It's so good. I gotta um, stop sharing video now because it's still lagging me out a little bit on the recording. Oh, damn. Yeah. Man, it was worth it, though. It was your afro. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah no, Freedom, dude, that doesn't surprise me. Freedom, that doesn't surprise me at all that you, like, that you did vote for Trump in 2016. I'm also going to guess that you probably aren't going to in 2021. Yeah, I'm not. JoJo! JoJo! JoJo, it's in! Uh, yeah, I would have loved Bernie as an option. It's not that surprising that he isn't, but I would have loved it. You're not even American! I uh, was born in the U.S. and an American, and, and an American oh, citizen. Okay. So I voted. Oh. I voted in the last election, and I'm going to vote in this one. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you can continue to vote even if you're living somewhere else. Yeah, uh, the yeah. U.S. doesn't recognize dual citizenship as a thing. Oh, uh, I kind of. I don't know. I kind of assumed living there was like a uh, no. requirement. No, you well, can I, vote I, as I, your parents. Wait, Tom, are you, are you not in the U.S.? I thought you were in the U.S. No, 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 I am in the U.S., but I find that weird. I, I would think that, I would think that we would have, like, a... Dude, not all Americans know the specifics of American law in regards to <laughs> voting abroad. Like, yeah. That's true, that's true. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. I, I, I genuinely would figure that one of the requirements would be that you're subject to the laws that you're influencing by voting. Well, you also still have to, you also still have to do American taxes. Oh, I know. Oh, really? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I mean you don't have to pay oh. American taxes because you're not you're not making money in the U.S. or whatever, but you have to do do American taxes. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. but you're I don't understand it. But the U.S. does it. not recognize that 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 dual citizenship or or plural citizenship exists. And legally speaking, there just isn't it just isn't the same. Got it. That's 
Well, like, I mean, it's, I, but you can't have it. It's fine. Like, for instance, China, you can't. You can't have citizenship. In any, yeah, the US, doesn't, the U.S. doesn't only. prohibit dual citizenship. It just doesn't recognize its existence. I mean. Which is super weird, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, why? It also, mean, it also means that it's not an easy thing for, like, Republicans to decide to, like, do a specific thing, like, target dual citizens, which here in Canada, our our conservative party did. Uh, dual oh. citizens, I'm pretty sure still even, can be deported. Okay, okay. That's uh, for certain crimes, yeah. Um, That's interesting. Which yeah, I, so I'm I'm glad that the U.S. doesn't handle things that way. No, 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 that's actually that's yeah. actually a good system. Like the alternative is that you just straight up have different laws for one group than for another group just yeah. because they weren't here originally. Mm-hmm. That's silly. Yeah, I, th- right, I mean, I think right. you can like stop being a U.S. citizen, but um, it's not like. It doesn't yeah, happen automatically if you become a citizen of, some, of somewhere else, unless that somewhere else requires you to, in order to become a citizen of that or fair. But, like, obviously Canada doesn't okay. do that. Yeah. Uh, is, yeah, is there anywhere that requires you to revoke citizenship? Oh, I'm um, sure. In order to be a citizen? Probably, yeah. I don't know if there are places that require, like, specific, like, uh, like in general, revoking citizenship of anywhere else if you if you want to become a citizen there. Um, but I'm I'm pretty sure there are places that at least like you can't be a citizen of s- other specific no. places if you want to join. Oh well, no. For China to be, you can only be a Chinese citizen. You can't be a citizen of anything. Okay, country. so yeah, that is that is the thing then. Yeah. Yeah, it's not specifically targeted. It's just you can only have Chinese citizenship. You can't have anything. Oh wait, I do actually have to turn on video again um, because oh, tea. tea and a whole and a whole pot. Because nice. you've got it. Very nice. Oh my god. I love I love that I got to see you. Pencil like, sharpener pencil. Pencil. Yeah, I've got a pencil sharpener on my wall. And beneath that is an entire thing of tea. Like that's all just random assorted teas. I'm I'm in I'm in elementary school all over again, except with extra tea. <laughs> with extra tea. This exactly. is great. This is great, honestly. Um I have not had a conversation in a group of people that I don't know IRL in video chat. In, like, ever, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I have, like, a okay. few times, but it's not it's not a regular occurrence for me either, yeah. <laughs> it's very novel. <laughs> oh, since we're on video chat, since we're on video chat, uh, I made this thing years ago. I like it. Wow. What is it? It, uh, it is an origami... I think this is an I caught the eater. Huh. Yeah. Cool. It's pretty. Uh, it is pretty. It's, all, it's its only function. Uh, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing Makes wrong it with a good that. decoration. Yep. Uh, all I do is just set it over there, and it doesn't doesn't do anything. Nice. Don't worry about it, right? I, I, yeah, I could have hung it on a wall. I didn't. My roommate literally just made something that looks exactly like that. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you can send, if you can take a picture of it, that'd be cool. I might I might recognize the design. Um, it's <laughs> modular origami. It's made of I want to say thirty pieces, but that feels like too few. Five, ten, fifteen. That's thirty. That's thirty. Do we want to continue talking about this and stuff? Yes, I think we should probably okay. continue talking about. It. We got like totally sidetracked by realizing, by realizing we can do video calls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I, it's I, not I just, realizing like, we can. It's realizing people are willing to. That's, <laughs> that's the thing. Well, that's true. I mean, it's yeah. funny because there are enough people in there are enough people in in like uh, especially those reg associated groups that like aren't willing to even like speak in voice. Let, like, let well, so, yeah. the thing is, like, I'm fine with you guys because like you guys are chill. You know what I mean? But like, I yeah. wouldn't want to do this just like in like <laughs> like Gregoria, like what it was there. Oh like, God! I mean, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. I would never. Like, oh um, my God! You know what? That's what you they're, they're going to dock me based on the position of the sun. Based on <laughs> it's not even that. It's just like... <sighs> but yeah, Queer Unity was safe. Uh, and was good for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this joke about... Uh, I, I think it might have been someone here who said it. Like, um, if you... I don't, maybe it wasn't, though. Um, if you want to find the good version of something, go to the queer version, because they're going to actively exclude the Nazis. That's fair. <laughs> Although, Same honestly, just requiring, effort, 
Dude, just requiring, like, a modicum amount of effort and, like, asking people uh, to, to, like, get into an area is, is also just a decent way of avoiding the Nazis. That's just enough. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, you know, like, uh, sincerity was, was pretty free of Nazis, um, and the, okay. and the Nazis could have, the Nazis could have gotten into queer VC, they just had to, like, ask a mob to make, to put them, to give them the role. So, like... <laughs> That's so genius! That's like, so they, they just had to ask someone, that was it. It never happened. The, the only requirement, the only requirement for joining that channel is to say in public, hey, can I be queer? You didn't even have to say in public. I I didn't. You just had to like. Oh. Well, you just had to pee. Okay, the guys. I oh, have there's nothing. I have things to do later today. You're right. We oh, should yeah, yeah, yeah. going with the discussion. So I would so like to because then also we have to plan for the next discussion and hate. And I don't decide know if, if we want to. We, yeah, we need to decide if we actually want to do it like ne- uh, on uh, on Saturday or on Sunday next week. Yes, we have some. And what about what's the status of the podcast? Uh, the status of the podcast is nobody has given me a better image, so we're going with the terrible one I intentionally oh, made. No! Oh, no! I forgot! Wait a minute. I actually have an app now where I can do some edits to it. Okay, good. If so, I, mean, you can edit, I can, I can put a good me. picture of Ayn Rand and a good picture of, uh, Wittgenstein. Okay. I can, I can postpone putting out, uh, putting, uh, this out just, for like a couple of days if we want to no, like No, no, just put it out. We can always change the image afterwards. That's fair. We can change yeah. the image. Yeah. yeah. After I'm done, mm-hmm. after this meeting is done, I'll uh, I'll do some like finalized edits to the first recording I have access mm-hmm. to post and post it. Um, yeah. 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 I'm gonna, awesome. I'm gonna keep talking. And then the platform edit I'm using has the option to export it like as as a video for YouTube, and if you have like a certain amount of people regularly paying attention to it, straight up just post to YouTube. Um. Uh. And then I can set it up with other things like Apple Podcasts or whatever. Okay. Yeah. I mean, let me know if I is there anything I can do. I do really appreciate you taking the kind of taking the lead yeah. on this. Um, um, yeah. And then but, for for meetings starting this one on, I'm keeping track of everyone who has been in the in the group, uh, in the mm-hmm. chat, so that uh, I can like post like who was who was there for the discussion with them. But the previous okay. ones don't have that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Moving uh, my arm voluntarily. Beautiful. All right. I like that thing where he said he had the example. Imagine like moving your arm and then like it wasn't actually happening, like or something. What was that example? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, did it. Was it, was I it actually did it. No, it was your arm. Oh, I, I know he mentioned like you're moving your finger and uh, but like uh, without oh. but like if it's not touched you can't do it and I uh, like when he was doing that I, I like moved my fingers because I had the weird like thought of what if I couldn't. Because it says, like, uh, imagine doing this. Yeah, uh, 624. In the laboratory, when subjected to an electric current, for example, someone says with his eyes shut, I am moving my arm up and down, though his arm is not moving. So, we say, he has the special feeling of making that movement. Move your arm over oh, with your eyes shut. And now try, while you do so, to tell yourself that your arm is staying still and that you are only having certain queer feelings in your muscles and joints. <laughs> <laughs> I get to say queer every time, because that's what my version says. It's as strange as mine. Would be yeah. interesting. It'd be interesting to like be paralyzed and and attempt to move it, and then have the feeling of the motion transmitted to your arm. <gasps> so you're is that Reuben? What? what? Oh, hell yeah, yeah. yeah. Reuben, nice. Hey, Reuben, uh, exists. welcome, welcome Hello. to the chat club. The chat, real chats are not afraid to show their face. Wow, Reuben, you look a lot like someone I knew in high school. Really? Yeah. I feel like That's interesting. I was gonna say something. <laughs> you just look like a generic person, but that's so <laughs> me. I really, I really like the jacket. I recently got a military style jacket. They're really good. You look totally normal. It's just, it's just cold. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that in a bad way, though. It's not bad. It's just. It's just really cold down here, so. I just did a quick edit of the the picture. Uh, I need to fix the words, but. Where are oh, voice text? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The uh, thing is, though, I feel like we can do a little bit better. We right? can totally like, do like all of it looks bad. We can do better than this. Bad is good. 
I mean, I think, like, it's, I don't mind it actually well, being okay, a square. Wait. I don't mind it being a square, but I just think if you crop it a little more, like, I like, like get rid of some more of the background. Like, oh, well, it doesn't no, it have to, to be a square. Yeah, no, it's a rough, rough edit right now. I'm still working on it. It has to be a but square. But I like it. Fix. <laughs> oh, you mean their, oh, you mean their faces, right. Fix the text, please. It's no, so no, no. What you should do? Leave the text there, and then have another it written again, like in like white text over top. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm in a different font. I'm literally doing that right now. <laughs> yes. We're just going for we're going for like peak terrible here. Yes, 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 <laughs> definitely. Okay, as long as it's possible to read in a thumbnail, you're you're going to be fine. Right now, it's yeah. not. Right now, That's you can't fair. It's totally not. So fuck Ayn Rand. All okay. my homies hate Ayn Rand. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know what? Okay. That actually makes it look better. <laughs> like, even though it's literally the same text just written over top, it actually looks a lot better. <laughs> no, exactly. That's the thing. That's, but then you just have to, like, make the squares a little, like, cropped a little more of the faces of Ayn Rand. Especially because you want to be able to see Nietzsche's face fully, right? Oh, that's true. <laughs> Nietzsche's yeah. fully face. Fully face. Nietzsche's fully <laughs> visible face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, or if you, goodness. or if you met, or if you use one of those face swap apps. <laughs> yeah, use a face swap app on that shit. You know, one of the ones that are like actually based on uh, on uh, what's it called? That AI thing that every news outlet was like terrified about for a little while. Oh, like deep fakes. Oh, deep fakes. Deep fakes. Yeah, deep fakes. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, that would be something that I'd enjoy talking to you guys about. Um, but I want to talk about it later. Because if talk about it now, we're never going to get through the text. Yeah. Oh, really my God, great. yeah. I'm actually really happy that we've done this. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy that you pushed me to do this. Because we have, like... We're we have someone pushing us through the text so now. We, we have... Yeah, like, I think it's really good. The text actually does have so much to talk about in it, but it was so hard to navigate on, like, this mm-hmm. thing, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Oh, who's going to do it nice. next week? Who's going to do it next week, huh? You know what? J- just have me do it every week and take away my John Galt role if I don't. Dude, <laughs> that would be so awesome. Like, that would actually be so awesome. <laughs> we greatly appreciate that, yeah. I, I, I think I mentioned earlier that I'm the only person here that's, like doing the reading, but also doesn't have a job. Hmm. So, know, there you go. Know, you know what, yeah, that does, that does work. There might be at least I mean, one other person who's in that situation, but whatever. I'm doing the right. reading. Nice. So oh. really. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's you should read, though. Absolutely. Fiber, you, you should. should read. I've been reading Deleuze and Hegel at the same time. Okay. This is more important than that. This is more, this important, is more important than that. No, you're totally right. Those are, the Those are the casual discussions. This is the really formal one where we go on hour-long tangents about things that are completely unrelated. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But really, this is the one that you're supposed yeah. to. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I, 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 I do genuinely feel though that um, I, I feel like uh, Wittgenstein got some really low-hanging fruit. You know. Um, like, like, the stuff that he's talking about here is so relevant. It's so I, relevant to whatever you're doing. I think and the strength of what Wittgenstein has, though, it's like, like, say it's low-hanging fruit, but it's also, I think philosophers, the way they try to talk about it, it's often, they try to be so pre- precise and try to come up with, like, you know, I mean, like the Tractatus, like, that's how they were trying to talk about language. And it's, uh, it wasn't intuitive at all. It, so it didn't bad. make sense. It was wrong. And it was just straight up wrong because the whole fucking point is that it's all about, like, it's a very internal, a sensational experience of, like, what we mean when we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he really got at that, I think. Um, Fiber, don't you have a kitty? How was your kitty? Boring. I don't know. Oh, I, shit. I, I, have, <laughs> yeah. I have two kitties, but they're not here right now. Damn. There, are three, there are three cats in this house, but my door is always closed because if it's not, they'll lock shit over. Oh, see, yeah. my door's always closed because if it's not, they'll, they'll like, put their paws against it and, like, make noise because they want to, because they want to be let out. They, they want to be let in, but when the door's closed, they want to be let out. I almost, yeah. want, to cat, I almost want to put a cat door on here that I can open and close. Mm. On my door. It'd be really cool if I could do that to my end. That's a good idea. 
put in an apartment and they probably charge me up the ass for that. They probably would. <laughs> Yeah. But they're going to charge me at the ass for what he's done to my carpet in the meantime, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, I was just You actually made something. it. Something. Get on cam. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah, show your face. Peer, peer pressure. Yeah. yeah. We're doing video right now. You miss hate. Oh, Kate, hey, you have to show him again. Okay. You're a fucking pro. It's so great. It's, it's so good. It's so good. It's awesome. Uh, this is funny. I, I don't think I've ever, I don't think, I think I've literally never seen a redhead of, redhead with a fro. So it's oh, cool. there he is. Well, congratulations, hey, you will. Good. Hello. Nice. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Everybody's got great hair. Yeah, it's so I know, true. Right? We do. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't really take care of mine. Hey, Amen. It's long. That's yeah, it's all you need to be great. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Uh, how, much, how, how much attention does that hair require, Hey. Not like a ton. Uh, right now, more than normal because it's like super long, uh, like this. Oh yeah. At, at a certain point, it, at a certain point, gravity like makes it more difficult to maintain. Yeah, I actually remember um, hearing about Bob Ross's afro. Right. <laughs> um, I remember perfect, he chose yeah. that look specifically because. Yeah, I remember he chose that look specifically because it was easy to maintain. Hmm. Fair. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, but well, we really need to try it. Just gets, I it may just have to. Goes down a bit. I may have to leave early if. Ah um, oh, shit. So, so actually, yeah, we can, can we please we go back to the house. Yeah, but let's first do like first oh. do logistics. And oh then, yeah, no, actually, yeah, we do the logistics right. now and then fin- and then keep going with the text. Ooh. Yeah, and then I may have okay. to peace out. But um, all right. So. so we, something. So we were okay. First thing is next. Did we want to move the discussion to Saturdays? That would be amazing for me. I mean, yeah. I can actually come to them. Well, that um, for anyone else. Else. I can work Saturdays. Saturdays are good. Yeah. Lehman? I mean, Hegel is on Saturdays, so... Hegel is on Saturdays? Fuck that yeah. shit! No, Hegel is on Saturdays. Hegel is whenever the fuck Hegel happens. Well, we're doing prep work, which is just... Milk them, just... Yeah. Hegel is whenever Hegel can happen. Hegel have been Hegel on Saturday. Hegel like Wednesday last time. I don't know why Hegel's on Saturdays. But oh, can no, we do no, Hegel on Sundays no. now? No. Can we just do Hegel on Sundays? So. Milcom isn't available on Sundays. He's available. Milcom is. I don't give a shit. No, yeah. he's never available. Yeah, so who gives a shit about Milcom? Like, Milcom is for, like, on Fridays or something. It doesn't even matter because next Sunday I can't meet anyways, so we have to do Saturday. Hmm. That's okay. Right. So at least we'll start. We'll just try Saturday next week. Yeah, and we can always change like, back. Milton can still his little hissy fit. Like, oh my god, but like I don't care. I got we're doing. The perfect broken impression. Hair pressure. The perfect image. Find? Text. Hair pressure. Yeah. Hair wow. pressure. And some drugs. Okay, too. Oh, Ed says Saturday is okay. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, so we're just Saturday, and I'm thinking of, for the reading, what we should do is read, um, so, so, like, they're, like, fragments or whatever, I think, is what they're called, like, and, and so it's, part, well, previously known as part two, but for mine it says, like, oh, wait, I can't see this. <laughs> it says, I don't know if you can see. It's really, it's really, really. Hey, okay, whatever. It says philosophy, philosophy and psychology. Philosophy and psychology. Philosophy. Philosophy, dare psychology. Yeah, psychology. Yeah, dare yes. fucking, uh, whatever they're called, words, right? Uh, German uh, isn't real. So I think. German your mom isn't real. Yeah, uh, so I think we should read up through fragment 10, which is, um, thing 109, because fragment 11 is super long, and then that we can finish it that way. So it's a little bit of a shorter reading, but I think that should be fine. Uh, what do you guys think about that? So, like, a part two will be up through 109? Sure. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. uh, It's of the, uh, the like, part two of the investigations. It's, like, really short. It's oh. not that long. Yeah. Um, yeah. Part two is, like, so, uh, 40 pages? Part two is, like, the extra oh. shit. Yeah. yeah well, so, let's say, okay. What do you mean read up to 109? Are there not, is it not numbered? It's not numbered. Oh, for my it is okay, but it says also up through. Um, is it is, is it labeled as fragments like fragment ten? No, uh, it'd be it'd be philosophical oh, yes, investigations exactly. too. 
No, no, okay, let me look at the, let me look at the actual whole thing, um, and see hey, what it looks hey, like for you guys. If everybody arranged the same in the grid, everyone, everyone point towards hate. Uh, wait. Nope, uh, nope. Okay. nowhere close to, nowhere close to the same. I'm in the middle, I'm, uh, top middle for me. Literally nobody except hate just pointed towards hate. Hate hey, is top middle? middle? Yeah, I point towards hate. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm top middle for me. You're top middle for me. I'm a uh, bottom yeah. left for myself. Yeah, you're bottom Wait. left for me too. You're bottom left for me too. Wait, then, Hoi Poibo, why did you point the wrong way? No, it is. Guys, it is. No, no, no. So, like, you see. Um, so, right now, I should be pointing to freedom. Uh, you're no, pointing no, no, to me. No, no, no. I, mine is, like, near. Guys, guys, guys. We need to never do video again because it's too distracting. distracting. Yeah, it's alphabetic. Oh, wait, no, but, oh, but, oh, but, okay, so it's, oh, it's it probably alphabetic depends on your people screen who are dimension. on video. Oh, yeah, resolution. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, the resolution of your window. Like, I've got my own window mode, so it's, like, three by three, as I, well, yeah, so three by three, but with one missing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. So we can so, just stop discussing video and go back to discussing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's discuss logistics. what we should read. So, yeah. um... Oh, let me see something, actually. I'm going to try and share my screen, because I think I figured out. Um, uh, shit. Okay, wait a second. Hold on. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can do this. Um, let me see if I can. Wrong cat. All cat. Is this going to work? Can you see yeah. this? It's finally working. I figured out how to get Discord streams to work. I had to get, I had to get a permission. Is there a way to oh, really? the resolution? It's like 480 or something. Uh, I don't know. I'll just stop streaming. Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter. It looks really bad. Um, <laughs> it's probably getting more bit rate. Yeah, I'll just stop it. But, uh, You're all streaming now. You might want to turn the bit rate back. Huh? Oh, is there no hey, way turn to... the bit rate down earlier. Oh, how do I I'm do that? I'm going to be right. It looks so bad. How do I do that? I don't know. Uh, no, that's all yeah, your bit I'll rate. Do it, I'll do it. Uh, what do you want the bit rate set at? I don't know. Wait, is that is that just audio or is that? Yeah, like... it's just that's just audio. Here, I put it back to sixty four. I think that's when it was up before. Okay. Well, um, I but no, just but try for it. the video quality is set when you start streaming. It's not. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I'm okay. Turning the bit rate back down because it causes problems. Okay. Is this better? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what yeah. I'm thinking yeah. is we should read. Sort of. oh, no. We should read up Good. through. Uh, like this will be where we stop. This one here, it's eleven. So like up to the end right. of this this page here. So like up to the place before. I guess it's page one hundred of the PDF. So we right. should read part two up to there. Okay. Um. I don't know how to. I guess I can. What I can. Oh, you know, I'll just do. I'll just take a screenshot and say read. Up to like this page, <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll do it like that. I think that should be a good reading schedule. And then we'll meet Saturday. What time Saturday? Uh, probably same, same time two. Two p.m. Yeah. Two works. Oh, no. Okay. I, yeah. So next week we are going to start part two of the investigations. Read up through. Um, section 10, uh, X. I attached. Page 100 on the PDF. Oh, oh. Okay. <coughs> Page 100 on the PDF. Um, and then, uh, also, we are changing the meantime. To 2 p.m. on Saturday. Um, yeah, I think that'll be nice because I really like having something disposable in it, and uh, and he's. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and it's on like Saturday, 30 right now, which is usually after. So that would be that would be August 15th. Yeah. I'm sorry that I have not. I just have other life shit. Sunday oh, for fine. some reason Sunday is just fucking packed. Yeah. Um, shit happens. It'll yeah. Be, yeah. It's good if we can get this to fit, like, around as many people's schedules as, as possible. Yes. Well, obviously, not everyone's going to be able to come every time, but, like, yeah. most of the time, for most people, yeah. 
I'm just happy. I'm just really happy that we have six whole people here who are not just here, but willing to show their faces. That's great. Yeah. You're actually I, human. I kind yeah, of wow. thought you know, you're into like two or three people per week really quickly. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, no, I just to, want everybody to true. acknowledge me for like keeping this shit together. I feel like <laughs> I had a pivotal role in this shit. Like I invested effort into trying to make sure people Yeah, but Monkey, you're also not on camera, so like it doesn't matter. You might as well be a, a robot. <laughs> also, in fairness, I think I'm the only other person that's attended every meeting, even though I didn't do all the readings. Well, you had a period where you didn't come for a couple weeks. You were busy. I remember you helped your sister move or some shit, and so you mm. didn't come for a couple weeks. And you yeah. were like, oh, oh. You, you you were about to give up. You were like, I don't know if I can justify doing this, blah, 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 blah. And then you came back. Then we pulled you back in because of Wittgenstein. It was great. Yeah. I, yeah, I missed some of yeah. I missed some of the midpoint of Wittgenstein. I caught up yeah. on so much reading all at once. It was great. <laughs> I have literally been to every single meeting, yeah. and I plan to continue to do so. I, I did not think that I, for some reason, I don't remember missing meetings. I thought that I had gone to the meetings but not done the reading. Which no, I that did happen point. a couple times. That did happen a couple times, but... Okay, those were also meetings that I missed. Okay. Yes, I remember, because there was one where it was, like, it was, like, me and Gal, which I really missed. I don't know what happened to him. I love Gal. He was so mm. sweet. He was so nice and so humble. He is. And I love his Irish accent. Yeah, um, yeah so I, I really want him back when, when we can have him. Yeah, I know. I I added him last uh, week and he never responded. I don't even think he's like been on oh. like um at all, which is really sad. Maybe I should DM him and see what's up. But I don't even know. Maybe he's just not on Discord anymore. Which it happens. I bet he's still on the server. <gasps> he's still on the he server. Is. No, he is. He just hasn't been online. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like and like I, I he hasn't even responded like. You know, to, but I'll, to, I don't think I DM'd him. I think I just asked him. So, like, hmm. Um, uh, but, so yeah, next meeting is at 2 p.m. on Saturday. We have our, our time scheduled for it. If somebody wants to do an, an image for it, well, yeah, I'll, I'll just put out the, uh, the first podcast episode. Uh, like, can you use the one that, that, yeah, I'm that, just like, gonna use. Fiber. I'll use what Fiverr posted then, and then I'll just, like, change it whenever we get yeah. something new. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I may add, like, music to the beginning or something, but probably not. I mean, do whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, at this point, this these podcasts are just for us more than for yeah, anyone it's like, else. It's, it's basically just, like, <laughs> a very easy a way to, like, try and get more people in because we already have these recordings. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, also, it's an easier. It's also easier to find things in an RSS feed than in our terrible, like, Discord channel with like people talking about the episodes in between. Um. Yeah. And so. Um. Okay. So I think we're good to go with logistics, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Um, Monkey's leaving soon too. Oh. So, yeah. We should go through the last bit oh. of, the, of this. All right. Yeah. We still have a bit left. Um, all right, and I hope we can get through it before Freedom has to leave, because it's really important, yeah. and I didn't really get it until my second reading. Okay, so let's go. Okay, well, um, okay. All right, so, uh, let's see, how much do we have left here? A decent amount, but, all right, all right. In the next section, Wittgenstein goes through several examples, which all have a common theme. Um, when interrupted... You may you may remember well what you were going to... Oh, and now that I think about it, the common theme which I'm talking about here is the contextuality, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and actually... Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm actually talking about a different common theme here. I'm just rereading my notes. Uh, okay. When interrupted, you may remember well what you were going to say if asked to continue, but you will still have to interpret your memories in order to say it back. When mm-hmm. reading... You must interrupt, or sorry, you must interpret the words on the page. Uh, and then he goes through the example of the private map, where you interpret a map and use it to find your way about, but can't explain how you use it. Um, mm. And fucking, what he has to say about these examples is to look on the language, at 656 here, 
He said, look on the language game as the primary thing, and look on the feelings, etc., as you look on a way of regarding the language game as interpretation. Um, and I think that that's a really important point, right? Like, he is... He's specifically saying, look at the language game itself in order to understand what's going on in all of these situations. Right. And I definitely yeah, did love all of them are, like, okay. connected to the language game, and they, and... It's the factor that's like confusing if you're thinking about it differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely skimmed over this. So, um, if anybody has anything else to say wait, about that, wait, I'm sorry. I think I kind of wasn't fully paying attention to you when you started, but like, what we're were you always incredibly surprised by that freedom. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, but, uh, no what? So it's hard to refocus because we just changed topics like so much, and we were just thinking about other things, and then going back right into the text. I'm just okay. So what, what were you? Yeah. Um, so so wait, you were saying like, what is the purpose? What was your main point about talking about this section here? Mm-hmm. It has a common theme, and that that area in specific um, talks about like how. Uh, language, uh, like how uh, the language game is like the the important like factor in yeah. all these situations. The language game itself, the playing of the language game, is the important thing to recognize when you're trying to understand how these situations work. As opposed to, uh, as opposed to all the other analysis he does. Like what know. other analysis? Um, like, uh, let's go to the first example, right? Which is uh, the interruption. Um, Six thirty-three. You were interrupted a while ago. You still know what you were going to say. If I do not know and say it, does that mean that I had already thought it before, only not said it? No. Unless you take the certainty with which I continually um. interrupted the sentence with the criterion of the thoughts already having been completed at that time. But of course, the situation and the thoughts which I had contained, which I had contained all sorts of things to help the continuation of the sentence. Well, I think, yeah, this is getting back um, to the beetle in the box thing. Like, the only thing that's, like, real is, like, the actual words said out loud, the actual externalized communication, not... Well, not even um, that. It's that you didn't have the thoughts, like, pre-made. Like, you could continue the thought you were having, but you hadn't fit necessarily even finished, like, putting that into words to speak. You just had the abstract that you were going to turn into, to continue to turn into words. Well, yeah, and I really also, like, later on, I think is that, um... If the words aren't already, like, created in your head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At 635, you know, you say, I was going to say, uh, you remember various details, but not even all of them together show this intention. It is as if a snapshot of a scene had been taken, but only a few scattered details of it were to be seen. Here a hand, there a bit of a face or a hat, the rest is dark. And now it is as if I knew quite certainly what the whole picture represented. As if I could read the darkness. Someone's I think uh, I think it was Callie yeah. and they made it themselves. I think it was actually fiber. It was, it was, yeah. But yeah, I mean I like that. Like like I think it's really accurate to think like when we you know like our memory of like a scene. It's not of, like, the whole scene. It's not, like, a picture of it. It's just we remember specific details and sort of fill in the gaps. Um, and, like, it, it, we re- it, it have an impression that it's remembering the whole thing, but actually we're not. It's just it feels that way. It's, like, it's sort of like the way you remember a dream. You know, you, um, I feel like what happens in your dream is not, like, a fully realized, detailed reality. It's just you remember a specific... Um, sensations that, like, but, but they don't, it's not like there was an actual virtual reality of your dream happening. It was just, like, those, only those isolated instances that you were aware and perceived were going on. Mm-hmm. And your brain filled in the rest, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it talks later about, um, it talks later about specifically filling in a picture, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Yeah, and that's a lot yeah. like how we, uh, well, that is yeah, what he's describing is how we how we form our, our ideas into like things we can actually say. It's so great because like my my pages start filling up with notes at this section. Like, <laughs> yeah. like some yeah, of it. I like, think I think the common thre- I think the common thread between all of these is uh, how he talks about interpretation as fundamentally a part of all of these language language games. You know. Mm-hmm. 
I'm reading my oh. page. In front of the map. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, are we good to move on? Because I don't want to linger too long on anything since Yeah, I think yeah. we can keep going past that now. Okay, okay. Uh, on 664, um, I'd like to note the distinguishment between Death's Grammar and Death's Grammar. Distinguishment. <laughs> distinguishment. Yeah. It's, not, it's probably it's not a word. word. I think it probably is a word, actually. Is it really? No, I'm looking it up. We understood the usage. Yeah, we did. So, so it might be a word. When I said the, yeah. the usage, it, it fit within the existing well, I, uh, English system for creating new words. It doesn't matter. Go on. I, I, actually, I actually do think that there's something wrong with the word distinguishment, right? Like, uh, I think the main thing that's wrong with it is that there's already a word for it. Um, <laughs> what is the word, though? Distinguishment. Yeah. I don't know. No way. No, it totally is. Is it really? Uh, <laughs> this is the weirdest tangent. All right. Okay. What is another word for distinguishment? No, 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 no. Astonishment. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Astonish- no, 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 not astonishment. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking retarded. I'm, I'm fucking retarded. I'm sorry. Distinguishment. Um. Okay. Yeah. No. 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 That's about the observation of difference. It sounds weird, but it'll work. Okay. Wait. Wait. Isn't that a distinction? Yeah, yeah, that's no. It's, that's that's right. Right. no, uh, no distinction. No, it would be the act of distinct of distinguishing. Well, well I just googled it, and a synonym of distinguishment oh, okay, is distinction. Okay. What what I thought was that I was going to find another word that started with distinguish that had a different ending that was going to mean the same thing as distinguishment. Well, that distinction? was wrong, I guess. No, that doesn't have. It's close, but it's not. It's close, but it's, it's not the close. same. Close. No. <laughs> Yeah, I do a lot of arm flailing. Give me a break. I've already gone over this. I do it when I'm not on camera, too. <laughs> They're very similar. Anyway, we should move on past that weird yeah. tangent uh, that we already okay, had, he, kind of. He distinguishes between depth grammar and surface grammar, um, which is... Uh, I find this interesting um, because uh, I actually think that uh, okay, so well, I this reminds this well, this reminds me of like uh, I, I, I maybe kind of forget actually, but it reminds me of like the necessary rules and the incidental rules. But maybe I just that just that just I could be remembering wrong exactly what he was referring to. Right. No, I think we need like depth grammar and surface grammar though. If you go through the example, um, like you you, you had, um, you can have sentences that uh, that mean nothing but sound like real sentences. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, um, I came up with an example for that. It took me a while to two. find. What? Well, reading the text, you, you, uh, what you wrote down, you, uh, you came up with two. Uh, where does he present examples? I don't know. Um, but what it, what it has here is more people have been to Russian than I have. Oh, yeah, I wrote that down, too. I wrote exactly that sentence down. Uh, and you have so uh, I came law, which I'm pretty sure was a response, which I'm pretty sure was, like, and thing, wait, wait, wait. Which, which I'm pretty sure was like talking about that, but also works as an example. Does, does Wittgenstein say that in this text? Say what? More people, More people than I have. Does he? No. He talks no, about Abracadabra. Where did you get that? Because more people have been to Russia than I have isn't. That's in like, your notes. You literally wrote mean? that in your notes, Sam. Like, that's there. Oh my god. I <laughs> my notes. I was wondering where yeah. you got that from. You got it from my notes. Yeah, I was reading that. off your notes. That was what I was saying. Yeah, it was like a specific example you wrote down and sent to us. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot that everybody had my notes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I like that one. Yeah, because it like he totally sounds like it means something, but when you actually go into it, it literally doesn't mean anything. Like yeah. it, it's not even a real sentence. So that would be going with surface grammar, but against depth grammar. Yeah. 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 Um, I found that really interesting. Um, uh, like, I was thinking about what the idea of surface grammar and depth grammar meant, and I was wondering, because um, he talks about um, what immediately impresses itself upon us about the use of a word is the way in which the way it is used in the construction of a sentence, part of its use, one might say, that can be taken in by the ear, um, and now compare the... Okay, okay. 
Yeah. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Uh, what happened was I actually didn't understand this section when I first read it, but now that I've kind of had this conversation, I get it now. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So you, is that why you wrote so uh, I don't know LOL? Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, after that, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I uh, <laughs> That's exactly why I did that, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> In the notes. Wittgenstein uses the example. Stick, 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 hack. Uh, I'm appearing a piano being tuned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He uses the example of a piano being tuned and being in pain and saying, I hope it'll stop yeah. soon. Which does he want to stop soon? What is he referring to? Pointing to your mouth or to the piano? Um, or lying about what you mean when asked, etc. Are all part of the language. In 670, uh, imagine that you were telephoning someone and you said to him, this table is too small or too tall and pointed to the table. What is the role of pointing here? Can I say I mean the table in question by pointing to it? What is the pointing for? And what are these words and whatever else may accompany them for? So what he's saying there is that the pointing is part of the language game, but it's inessential in this context. Um, it doesn't have a point, you know? And I think that I think this is a really powerful example because it really point, um, it, it points to it points to the fact that we use language games specifically in order to affect other people. And the reason that the pointing doesn't have a role in this context in the language game is because it doesn't affect the person you're talking to at all. Right, because they already know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, even if they don't know what you're talking about, they can infer that there's a table in front of you, you know? Yeah. Well, what I mean is, like, you point at this table, and you, you say the table, You the pointing is unhelpful and redundant and useless because it's already evident that that's the table that, that you are talking about. Unless there's, like, multiple tables in front of you. Yeah, exactly. In which, case pointing, in which case, pointing would actually have meaning, right? Pointing yeah. would also have emphasis. Oh, yeah, also. It could be used for emphasis. Also, though, like, I feel like it's meaningful as well, because imagine you're face-to-face, right, in the same room, and then you say, this table, it has a different kind of effect, because the other person is, like, primed to expect there to be a table in front of them talking about for you to point at it, but then they don't get the point. Yeah, that's true. I feel like if I was they in a room and someone point. said, this table, I feel like it would be weird if they didn't gesture at the table in some way. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I, I do feel like there are certain. I do feel like it's interesting to analyze the the role that non-word parts of our language game. Body have, language right? is a language. It's a yeah, real body language. language is part of the, you, is part of the same language yeah. game. Yeah, you, you could easily imagine somebody like a uh, like this table. This table is too damn tall. I <laughs> body body language that table. Really is, that is too tall for a table. To be fair. It is far too tall for a table, and in, in certain context, I might, in a certain context, I actually might be talking in like a little made-up language game where I imply to somebody that like where I'm pointing to is like this table is fine, this table is too damn tall. In that case, I'm doing the same gesture as pointing, but I'm not actually. It's not the same thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I love that, by the way. Extra options are opened up now that we're in voice chat. Or video oh, chat. yeah, we've got, we've got. <laughs> Pointing actually means something here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I, I, I do really like this section in general because it really emphasizes. It emphasizes the point of the language game um, and what's essential about it, what rules are essential to it. Mm-hmm. Right. And it, yeah. it, it, it's not pointing your mouth or piano or lying are all part of the language game. Yeah. Pointing and Yeah, I didn't think about this when I was first reading it, but like, it's also really interesting how, like, like he talks really early about how the, the phone call where pointing would do nothing. We have like the specific example of, of speech without being able to see the person making pointing completely uh, useless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he was talking a long time ago about uh, how the l- rules of a language game can obviously mutate over time and, like, kind of be implied between people. And I find this to be a really interesting and uh, important example in how that kind of thing can happen. 
because it's really clear. Um, I, like you, I kind of just showed how it would happen right there, right? Um, the meaning of this gesture right here just mutated without me even, without me even, like I wouldn't have had to say the words that I said in order for it to be taken you know? out. I would have just had to move my hand up and down. Mm-hmm. And that's really interesting. Um, all right. So, let's see. He, he kind of jumps here. Um, it's kind of a jump. It's kind of not a jump. But uh, he starts talking about meaningless and not that, right? Uh, 682-ish. Bum, bada, bum, bum. Yeah. You mm. said it'll stop soon. Were you thinking of the noise or of your pain? Just... Hmm? Oh, um, Ed, Ed said something about, um, oh. I, oh. J- just, just like an aside thing, but that, um, ah, right, yeah. In comparison, in comparison to, um, in person verbal communication, um, talking, like, using technology primarily is a lot less natural, and people are... I, you, you can just read it. I don't know why I'm trying to pair it. Humans evolved verbal and nonverbal language in a context where there was no telephone. This is probably why our instinctual communication is not adapted to a phone call. There are useless parts. Hmm. Yeah. Although, to be fair, I, to be fair, most of that I'm stuff also wouldn't apply if you were shouting at someone over, over like, a distance. Like, there are instances in which verbal communication with nonverbal, with most nonverbal language not being noticeable, like, still applied that, that we would have had to adapt to a long time well, ago. Well, shouting at somebody over a distance is, like, a really... It, I think the more obvious example is just talking to somebody around a corner, you know? Hmm. Like, there's just a tree between you. Mm. Or you're not facing yeah. each other or whatever. Yeah, there, there are yeah. there are instances, but they are significantly more common now. Where, where yeah, that's fair, that's fair. Isn't relevant. Um, uh, I think we should go to the uh, the, bit you're, the bit where you're talking about one uh, about 682. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he presents the idea that you could mean both. Um, when he's talking about... Um, you said it'll stop soon. Were you thinking of the noise or of your pain? Um, you could be talking you about You could both. very easily mean both. Uh, you could lie in either direction. Um, like, like, you have a lot of options open here. Um, and to, to make the idea that he's getting at more clear here, in 683, he talks about drawing a head, which looks rather like M, but you intend to represent N. He asks if you establish or report a connection in such a case. And if there already was one. Uh, here, Wittgenstein further emphasizes the contextuality of language and its use as an instrument. Um, so I think that what he's saying is like, what you mean depends on what you're trying to affect in the other person, if that makes sense. Does that seem like a reasonable interpretation? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Stuff. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm going almost a little farther than text here um, when I say that, but like I feel I feel like that's solid. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. All right, um, we're almost at the end. All right, last paragraph. Uh, finally, he establishes the connection between what it is to mean something and the thing that you mean. He goes back to the mathematical series. When I teach someone the formation of the series. I surely mean him to write, uh, when I teach someone the formation of the series blank, I surely mean him to write blank at the hundredth place. Quite right. You mean it. And evidently without necessarily even thinking of it. And what he's saying here is that when you mean something, I wrote N here, you can perfectly well mean, yeah, when you mean N, you can perfectly well mean him without thinking of him. And that this resolves the issues we were facing with meaning, which all arise from the idea that connection was actively being established. That you were like thinking of the connection as you were saying the words you were saying. And honestly, I, I felt like the end of this section, the end of part one was maybe a little bit, uh, I don't know, anticlimactic almost. 
Um, he doesn't do like a big summary of what he means in all of this. He's just like a uh, butter. He, he butter. just goes on a little side note about butter. Yep. Whew. Man, that was fucking, that was a lot. Jesus Christ. That was a good job. Yeah, dude, thank yeah. you so much. Sorry, I wasn't really paying attention at the end there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, as, as, so, <laughs> as, as long as you understand the thing about meaning not being the same as actively having something in your mind, you're good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, does anybody? Um, I felt a little bit iffy on my interpretation of that last bit. Did anybody else interpret that differently? We should. I feel like Wait, what did I interpreted it about the same way. Oh, uh, the bit at the end where he's talking about yeah, where you can mean person and or person and. Yeah, I feel like maybe there might have been something I missed there. Mm. I think um, we should. It should be clear that there's a lot of subconscious activity going on in the language game. So, like, um, so when you mean something, you might not literally, literally be thinking about it, but you are kind of subconsciously thinking about it. So the reason you don't feel that is, well, like, um, it would be a waste of time to think about everything all the time. So many activities in your brain just have to be subconscious. Hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, you're wasting energy. Right. It's not necessarily something you're actually thinking about. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. I, I feel I've, he spent so much time on that, and it was at the end, so I thought maybe there was something a little bit more there. But no, I guess he. No, I think. Really I mean, he spends a lot of time reiterating the same points and going, just exploring them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Man, fucking dogs in the back room. <laughs> so, so dog. All right. Very dog. I think right. that's a good way to a good place to end it because I monkey and uh, and freedom need to leave and I actually need to yeah, go sorry. as well. Yeah, I need to go as well. All right. All right. Um, All right. Yeah. But good this stuff, was really then. fun. Um. So next Saturday, and we'll have the um that first hundred page, oh, what first whatever of the um. The first episode of the podcast will be out uh, later today. Ooh. I'm so excited. Nice. Yay. Thanks, Kate. So I really appreciate you taking the lead on this. And Somniette, are you going to prepare another like uh, set of notes for us to help lead us through? I think yeah. the answer is Somniette is going to prepare another set of notes or he's going to lose his something John Galt role. That's, 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 that's true. <laughs> so that's we'll do it like good. that. Awesome. Okay. Cool, guys. Well, it's been fun. Um, I'll see you all next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye.